Hello, I am Jessica. I have many notebooks, even more pens. So therefore, I am obviously a writer of some sort. I love anything to do with romance, especially fantasy and sci-fi and paranormal. And I'm Emma, and I always forget what to say because you always catch me out with what you say. You say a different thing each week, and I love it. I'm just sitting here listening, going, that's great. Um, yeah, I'm a writer and a reader of romance, too. I can't think of anything interesting to say after that one. Back to you. <laughs> oh, she's a superhuman slash genius for anybody who watches Brooklyn Nine-Nine, <laughs> and she is a Svengali with a computer, so I can add to that as well. Fair enough. I'll, I'll take it. Thank there you we very go. Much. Yay. On that note, I am here to say welcome to our penultimate episode, week five. We are here. If you are still with us, thanks. Um, <laughs> if you if you heard last week, this doesn't apply to you. So please just shh for a minute. If you are new to this, this hi. Um, firstly, we want to say spoilers for this. If you have not read the book. Or if you don't want to know about this book or the week before's book, stop now. Go start at week one. Keep listening. One, two, three, four. Go and do those first. Then come back to us. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. So this is thing. We have got six episodes here where we are linking them all by six degrees of separation. So week four last week was Promise of Darkness by Beck McMasters. And this week we are linking with the theme Memory Loss. And we are going to Heart of Obsidian by Nalini Singh. Yes. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to read the blurb. A dangerous, volatile rebel, hand stained, blood red. A woman whose very existence has been erased. A love story so dark it may shatter the world itself. A deadly price that must be paid. The day of reckoning is here. Short and sweet. Yeah, short and sweet. Very dramatic. Ooh, right. Which is not going to be like our podcast. So let's get to it. No, yeah, that's, yeah, spoiler alert for that too. <laughs> so yeah, no apologies for that one though. Let's get to it. <laughs> All right, so um, I think we should start by saying if you've not done the side changeling stuff before, this is book 13 in the series. So I started from book one many years ago and so knew what was going on with the people and the situations, but you didn't, did you? No, no. I'd read the very first book, um, probably not long after it had come out. It was probably about a decade ago I don't know is that how long they've been going if it feels that long it ago like who, it. who knows what time is these days yeah but it was a long time ago and I hadn't read I haven't read any of the other ones but I remembered just enough from the first one that linked into this because I think the first one if you're gonna if you feel like you need to read any I think just the first one is enough because it's yes. got probably the most relevant part of backstory to it hasn't it yeah well yeah I mean it does sort of the prologue bit in the beginning mm. the the darkest part of night kind of explains the bits to yeah. you yeah but some of the character bits and pieces in there will yeah be that's it I think a little bit probably more as I was reading it there's probably a lot of characters that are mentioned that if you've been following a series you're going to be like oh yay it's this person and of course they're going to be involved but when you're reading it as a standalone you're like oh, there's just quite a few characters here. But, you know, it it's written really well and done really well, so yes. you don't have to have read anything else. You can pretty much put it all together for yourself, I think. And anybody who's anybody has been waiting for this book anyway because we all want to know about this dude. Yeah. See, I now I've read it, I want to go back and read the others to see how he was portrayed in the other books because it sounds yes. like he's been like this character that's been lurking doing stuff being an enigma and never no, everyone doesn't know what he's doing kind of thing yeah there's a lot going on behind many closed yeah. doors yeah so yeah let's start off with the backstory just a snippet mm -hmm. so otherwise we're one to twelve books in the first five minutes yeah so um yeah so it explains to you what the psi are and how they work 
So Psy are a race. There are three races within this Psy changeling world, which are the Psy, the changeling and the humans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just tacked on at the end there. They're really um, not so, relevant, are they? <laughs> no, we never are we in these kind of books. They're the boring really? ones. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. What can you do? Yeah. Sit up, stand up. No. That's bad. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, um, the Psy, they they live on a different plane. They've got this. I don't know what you'd call it, but to me, it's kind of like another mental plane that they kind of all operate on, as yeah. well as the physical plane. So, yeah. um, and they have this thing called silence that they've all lived by, which is mm-hmm. pretty much shutting down all emotions and yeah. just yeah being devoid of anything yeah it kind of to me it kind of merges the idea of if you imagine everybody being connected via social media in your heads yes but also uh, kind of like brave new world do you know that sci-fi no let's not so, start this um, again no 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 <laughs> i won't i won't but um or, or equilibrium there's like um yeah the the shutting down of emotions in order to help them deal with the massive amounts of information and connectivity that they have because otherwise yes. they they have believed that it will drive them insane um, yes. and create these behavioral problems in them if there's just too much going on and they're too emotive so they're taught to use silence That's yes how i understand so, yeah so they did it as the way to end violence and all the yeah. craziness that's gone on but unfortunately it did have a way of creating no. a hell of a lot of psychopaths yeah that's it that's the thing that sort of sums up in that in that prologue it's like well yeah you've, you've completely taken away any ability for empathy which makes them ruthless and cold and yeah perfect psychopaths basically perfect killers Yep. So, and this is where we are introduced to one of them. So it does kind of <laughs> make mention a snippet in there that there is a war brewing, which yeah. again, past books, it's in there, but yeah, war, you know how that works, people. It's never great. So we jump into chapter one and we are, we are here with our male protagonist. His name is Caleb Krojcik and he is in a house i will will tell you a little bit about him first okay so there are various designations of psi yeah and they all have these abilities so he is a tk which is telekinetic Mm -hmm. he is also a teleporter which is Mm -hmm. a t designation now again won't go into much detail but there are various gradients so you start at a zero if you have very tiny amounts and you are Mm -hmm. a 10 plus if you go kind of off the scale if you are off the scale you are cardinal he is Mm -hmm. a cardinal in both of these he is the only dual cardinal psi in the entire world so yeah be very afraid of this man yes he has a lot of power so we meet Caleb in his house and he we basically find out he's been with a quarry that he's been searching for for seven years. Yeah, that was something that was very noticeable to me was the language that was used when he's thinking about her because it's a woman. The quarry is a woman, but he's using it's from his perspective, isn't it? And he's using very cold clinical language like a predator type language she's been Mm -hmm. his quarry and he's found her now and yeah and she's like huddled in a ball she's been kept in captivity yeah yeah she's very small and fragile it kind of does Mm -hmm. the predator prey thing is definitely there how it describes her yeah Um, but yeah and you kind of the way he speaks and talks you can see they've got a history and it's not great it's not clean or pleasant yeah He's trying to get her to drink some water, isn't he? She needs to, yes. he's he's put her in a room that's like a box of a room to try and not overstimulate her after she's been kept captive for so long. And the, there's a mention that, you know, he's looked, he's looked at advice about how to deal with people who have been kept like this. And it's all about being gentle and calm. And that's not his way. He's just no. very cold and like, you know just just drink it you need to drink it you know he's he's hard on her 
Yeah, his MO is not cuddly. No, he's, he's not. No. So, yeah, he does what he can to try and coax her to mm-hmm. be human, and it's just not happening. So he kind of, he leaves her to it, and then there's a big crash. And so, yeah, she's smashing the mirrors. She won't drink the water yeah. until mm-hmm. he kind of, he figures all this out. The mirrors are smashed. She won't touch anything. She's looking for cameras. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. So he sips the water, gives it to her. And suddenly she kind of becomes less crazy feral cat lady and more. Yeah. Okay. A bit more compass mentors. But in the meantime, he's on kind of this psychic plane the entire time. Mm-hmm. He gets a buzz that there's an attack somewhere. Yeah. So he kind of deals with that in the background. He's kind of multitasking Uber yeah, super yeah. overlord. Mm-hmm. He can do like 15 things at once. I need I need a Caleb in my yeah. hands. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For many reasons, let's be fair. Yeah, we'll, I was going to say, we'll go through all of those as to why we all need to have it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when he kind of goes back in after everything, she's fully dressed and she's showered. And then we jump into her mind and we kind mm-hmm. of then see the other side of it, how she wakes up and she's in a different place that's yeah not soft soft. It's kind of black and hard and obsidian. And she can kind of see yeah. there's a wall around her. Yeah, they have shields, don't they? That's the thing to protect their innermost thoughts because they're all connected on the plane. It's like a firewall, isn't it? It's like yeah. um, a lot of it is kind of, you can, you can kind of understand from internet stuff. And she she doesn't have those anymore because when she was in captivity, they were attacking her mind to try and get to something, which she's yes. protected herself from. But now yeah, she's... This is it. Yeah, now she's with him. She she doesn't know him. She doesn't know why she's there, but she senses this shield around her, which has a familiarity to it, doesn't it? She yes. has like this this moment of familiarity. But with what's going on with her head, she kind of the tweaks in her mind she knows as well because mm. she remembers something and then everything in her head twists. Yeah, she calls and it she the realizes labyrinth, doesn't her she? labyrinth, yeah. So she's put mm. something in place and she knows it's hers, but yeah. she doesn't know anything else about it. It's kind of like, yeah. it's mine. She knows. Oh, no yeah. idea where it's come from. Yeah. And like she goes out on this terrace, which was where he was. He was building the, the fence, the yeah. metal fence to protect from the gorge <laughs> that's there. And and she just stands there. And while she's having these thoughts, she, she's there for like two hours while she's working through these things in her head and just trying to get a sense of where she is, but she doesn't really have a sense of that time. It's kind of like she's she's just like on the worst trip ever. She's gone, receded so far into her head. She doesn't know where she is or what she's doing. She kind of chases after these little snippets of thought and she kind of Mm. gets little bits of herself back and he wants to, she's very thin, she's very... You know, yeah. she's not eaten, she's not drank, she's not done anything. They've kept her prisoner. So she's very thin. So he feeds her up. So as with how clinical the site are, they don't eat anything other than yeah. nutritionally balanced meals and they drink water. So they eat mm-hmm. protein bars to give them the correct calorie intake mm-hmm. per meal. So he gives her epically highly calorific food. So because he is this TK and this telepath, he can just bring something in from the bakery because you can so he brings her in lovely sweet food anything comforting to kind of make her feel safe and secure Mm -hmm. and she sits down to eat it and then she splits it and shares it with him yeah and it's kind of a really weird thing so this dude who's supposed to be epically silent sits down with her and kind of eats this food he does it to appease her and you can kind of like in one way you could be like well logically he's he's doing that and she's doing it to be reassured that the food isn't drugged because that's what she did with the water. And But I think mm-hmm. the way she does it, the way she sits down and shares it out, it just feels a bit more companionable. There's more of this... Familiarity. Yeah, that's it. They just kind of sit there and she shares it like it comes naturally to her to share things with him and for him to humour her in it. Yes. In like be like, yeah, all right, I'll have that, even though it tastes disgusting and intense yeah, to me it's weird yeah. for him but yeah. to me again on the reread I had these good guy bad guy moments I don't know if mm-hmm. I don't know why I was writing them down because there were there were quite a lot so yeah she'll chat to him and it'll be a good guy mm-hmm. moment and then at the end of it he'll drop in an awful thing 
at yeah. the end of it. So I think they're chatting and she sort of speaks to him about what's going on and she knows mm. that what is around her, this black shell, is his. Yeah. And she's like, well, why why are you putting it around me? And he's like, because I don't want mm. people to see you. Yeah. He's like, oh, can I see inside you? And he's like, no, you don't want to see what's in my head. It's not mm. nice. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, okay. So yeah, there's yeah. always there's a lot of these moments, and I noticed yeah, he, something as I read through it, and it, yeah. it kind of went, oh, I think it even goes further in that that conversation, doesn't it? Because he's like, he can does he admit that he can send people mad? In, like yeah, seeing, can, yeah, if you connect, it will to send his you mind, insane. You're gonna go insane because <laughs> um, it's just so dark and terrifying in there. Um, well, it's yeah. it's kind of like, well, why do you do that? And it's like, because I can. <laughs> Uh, oh okay um yeah (laughs) okay yeah yeah. so not trying too hard with the reassurance but it's kind of it's just this clinical honesty isn't it he just is being brutally honest with her all the time very childlike in as we have with a lot of these males it's very much there's no filter (laughs) it's just Mm. kind of what is in there comes out yeah i've got thoughts on something about that a bit later on which I'll, oh okay that yeah you'll get to yours and I'll get to my good guy back yeah, yeah. I think and we'll we'll yeah. cross over yeah. so yeah um yeah she's got it all in her head we're going through all of her head as her labyrinth mm. keeps twisting that she kind of knows he's not saying things and she knows that what is in her head wouldn't stop him because he's mm. obviously that big but then it twists again and she sort of starts to follow them and piece them together and then there's this new attack that comes in Australia yeah. mm-hmm. so he has to shoot off yeah and we learn a little bit more about other members of the psi community yeah because these attacks that are happening are by pure psi who are like a terrorist organization who yes want there to be only silence a rigid silence and they've seen the changes that are happening within the psi community so yeah Um, there is a council that's kind of been over the the first 12 Mm -hmm. books is there very stiff and strict and rigid at the beginning and it has slowly but surely decreased and tweaked and changed and Caleb is on the council and other councillors have come and gone for various reasons yeah the system is still there and they have these anchor points and that's what's happened with this terrorist attack is that they've taken out an anchor and these anchors are who everybody in a certain area is connected to and if they're taken out suddenly it's such a shock to their system that it kills the size basically yeah. it's like ripping out a half of their brain or something I don't know that's yeah. you know it's it's really power surge yeah. yeah and so um yeah so they've attacked this one anchor in Australia and tons of people have died including there was like a nursery nearby wasn't there that yeah, was all yeah part it was of a it. perfectly like, picked point yeah it's harsh yeah they're not not nice people at all no but this is a thing it shouldn't affect the psi in any way because children are they are a means to an end they are a biological yeah. line to carry on a skill mm. or a talent or a it's you know a, a designation legacy mm-hmm. yeah pretty much so yeah we move he kind of goes out and helps and we get a little bit more insight on the pure side then he comes back and we learn a little yeah. bit more about the woman. We find out her name. Her name is yeah. Sahara. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, her labyrinth, as he's been gone, she's piecing little bits of it together. Mm-hmm. And she knows who she is. She knows what her side designation is. But she knows it's maybe not as it should be. So she is yeah. an f psi, which is to do with foresight. But her hers is tweaked. B, isn't it? B she side. has backside. Backside, yes. yeah. Or B. Yeah. B so, designation or something like that there's a lot of letters and things. yes there are well, it's just easier to kind of keep saying it than saying telekinetic and teleportation oh yes definitely stuff. yeah smart yeah, she is she is she's a thank you very much <laughs> yeah, thank you Nalini but yeah she also has a hidden shadow ability which she knows it's mm-hmm. there and it's not great and I think mm-hmm. something's in her head is she is he keeping her there yeah I think she knows that's the thing that people were trying to get to when she was held in captivity and is that what he's after she doesn't really know what's what's his motive because he's not he's not doing to her what was done to her before was that you know they were torturing her and and trying to force her to release information or act for them in a certain way 
which was why she was retreating. But equally, she's not exactly free. She's not been returned to her home or, you know, she's not in a medical facility. She's just in a house with a, you know, a distractingly attractive man. Let's let's be fair, she's she's already noticing this, even Mm, though, you know. Broad shoulders. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. (laughs) See, it doesn't mention an accent, but he is, he is, they're in Moscow. So I'm assuming, and with a name Russian like to me, with the name well, like that. I would, I would have thought, but yeah, you yes. don't really know, do you? Because no, it doesn't say you didn't necessarily grow up there. No, that's all good because I can just imagine my yeah, Eric Northman esque thing in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he kind of does, again, going back to it, she mentions that because he's a TK, he would have absolutely no need to be anywhere near her. As, yeah. as a designation so the the foresight and the backsight are mostly used to mm. play like the stock market and earn money yeah. because they can yeah. see all the fluctuations and all sorts of bits and yeah. pieces but again all these little comments I love that he snips in which I probably shouldn't because that makes me a bit of a weird psychopath she's like you know <laughs> do you want my do you want my abilities that way I'm here and he's like no you just belong to me and it's yeah like, he does get in yeah I mean that's the first like, so many whoa moment is that yeah yes that's that's not reassuring to some you just belong to me you are just my person yeah, yeah my pet yeah. now like in my house yes <laughs> you're mine um yeah there's a lot of mind Sit. stuff <laughs> yes. definitely i did put that i did put lady mine in there as well there's some of yeah the i yeah i've got yeah i think um yeah, when we get to the lady minds as well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> they sound like something that's going to detonate. Lady minds, bang! <laughs> yeah, it's good. This is a new name for PMT, lady mind. <laughs> the lady mind. Yeah, that's so true. But yeah, so yeah, there's a mention of a maths book. So he kind of gives mm-hmm. her this book. Yeah. And um, that's kind of a bit of a relevant thing. It's a really random mm-hmm. point, but it's a relevant thing. And he kind of knows, Everything he kind of points out is relevant. Oh, so many little things. Yeah. I had to write down so many lists of things that they were mentioning yeah. that are pointless and nobody will hear, but I did. But yeah, yes. there's a maths book with like writing in it. And mm-hmm. he's kind of like, he gives it to her and she doesn't really think much of it, but it's obviously poignant in yeah. some way to them. Yeah. So I think at that stage, she's, he's doing like a meeting. He's doing, he's doing business. Did you do watch you um, business things? The the Muppet Christmas Carol. Of course, every year. Of course. If you know it word for word, like myself, then whenever I read a romance novel and there are, you know, these ruthless businessmen, I always think of the bit where they go back <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you'd be men of business. <laughs> and it's like, because that's that's how they do business in books. We don't need to know because business is just how like it works. corporate stuff is is boring, let's be fair. But you know, they're always doing serious business and they're doing it very well and very ruthlessly. And he's obviously very good at it. <laughs> She's she wanders into his office and he's got like a completely clinical desk, hasn't he? Yeah. But she kind of expects that from what she's seen of him is that he's going to be very clinical and like behind his desk are all these shelves with you know lots of books that make sense uh, but some of them don't there's lots of little yes, pieces little things yeah a little tattered book of poetry which like you know size so don't read poetry because it's no, you know it's science. emotive it's not really what's the point um mm. there's and, a little bit of wood you know, as well isn't there there's a little bit of mm. yeah a little bit of wood and a and a stone, isn't there? A special stone, which I think she steals. I think yes. she finds it. She takes it or she goes out to the terrace. And this is what you were saying about his multitasking. He's like, while he's doing his, his business, he's like, he's bringing in a sun lounger for her. <laughs> he's teleporting yeah. the sun yeah. lounger. Yeah, you'll burn. <laughs> yeah. Here, have some mango juice, freshly squeezed mango juice. She's like, um, you're showing off. <laughs> Just stop yes, it. You're showing off <laughs> yeah. now. I love that. And you get like a little taste of the fact that she's she's not entirely frightened of speaking her mind to him a little bit. Yeah. And that's tele- telepathically as well, isn't it? It's like, yes, so they can <laughs> talk to each other via the net. So, yeah. yeah, these are so many things you miss out, Jessica and Emma. We need to remember some of these. <laughs> <laughs> yes, an important note, they can speak to each other, any yes. of them, through yeah. the sign net, just by yeah. a thought. 
I think when I said about the internet being in your head, that kind of did that kind of social media in your head that that makes... mine doesn't work that way okay. mine has very many frayed edges that <laughs> okay. go off in all directions you're talking about Muppets Christmas Carol and my brain's going oh, really? no cheeses for us Mises, Mises. yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh if only there was an excuse to do a special of the Muppet Christmas oh. Carol at Christmas I love that. We could put a so fantasy much. twist on that, can't we? We could just do that anyway. There's like zero romance in that film. <laughs> so yeah, no, he's sorry. um going through all this stuff, and there's a bit about we learn about the there's a tweet, there's something wrong with the net. Now yes. he's been in it and he's used it and he knows every single inch of it. Um mm-hmm. and there are there are two parts to it that are kind of sentient. And yeah. there's the mind net and the dark mind, which yes. kind of to me, it's kind of they're both quite childlike, but one is very yeah. tender and mild and meek, and the other is that the bullying child who kind of pulls the legs yeah, off spiders you kind of and get, things like that. He he mentions that when he was younger, that was the only contact he had. He was connected yeah, with, with somebody to, to them. talk to. So he's got this relationship with what is basically yeah, like the controlling elements the core elements that are the net mind and the dark mind or something isn't it like yes. you said um and he almost thought of them as friends and now he's separate from them but they communicate with him in a way that they communicate with nobody else he yes. can kind of control them and they will show him things that are happening yeah, like pictures or, isn't it yeah or like deep in the recesses of the the system of how it's all all built or connected I don't know I guess it's like a biochemical thing but let's not I'm not going to try and go there and understand yeah, it too not. much no 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 um basically it's like a really big Sainsbury's and in the back corner something <laughs> is dying the milk has all gone off in the back corner uh, oh, if you're American uh, like Walmart or Kmart or yeah, yeah. Target <laughs> and the milk has gone bad and there's yeah. a, the net is rotting somewhere yeah. and you know, they're sending him pictures of like mm. death and decay and destruction and he's kind of yeah. trying to keep it locked mm-hmm. in barricading it in it's like a virus is how i understood it and it and it infected a group of people who all went like absolutely insane mental and- started killing each other just like sunshine like Station. a rage yeah like a rage type lovely um, name for an awful place yeah so they've done that yeah walking dead style thing they've, yeah. they've all you know ripped into each other and then there's just that one person left who i think they've got contained to see what's happened um but it does seem to be originating from the net itself like something's gone wrong with the net and they think yes. it is it's connected to silence as well. They think yes. that, you know, the, the all whole these way minds are... all these minds that are are broken because they're not, yeah, they're not using all of the pieces they should be using to live or, yes. you know, it's so, killing itself. Yeah. And he comes out and um a couple of the other counselors have noticed that that's happened too haven't they and so he goes yes. straight to talk to them he just teleports across so cool yeah. it's just no all around the shop yeah as long as he's got and that's one of the things that his cardinal status means he can lock on to different things a normal teleporter needs to have more don't they to yeah so not just it, like, he can do like a, just a very simple lock but they need a full visual or they need to yeah, have been there yeah. before or something depending and he on can the do level it on a at. person if he knows the person he can lock yeah, on where them. they are yeah it's like he can find them in the net kind of like gps i guess and then he'll yeah. just yeah and he can go to them but not not all teleporters can do that and that's what's quite no. terrifying about him he'll find you if he knows you he can find you wherever you are yeah and he will yeah. kill you Yes, and that was the reason he couldn't find her was because she didn't know herself. Yes, but Mm. yeah, we learn a little bit more about her. Um, Mm -hmm. So we kind of, we deal with the counsellors. It's Nikita and Anthony, if that's of any relevance, because they come up a little bit later, Anthony especially. Yeah. 
So then he goes to deal with them. We sit and learn a little bit more about her. Firstly, she hates maths, so fair play to her. Yes. And she's um, with her designation. She's really good with languages. Yeah, and she didn't yeah. know whether they were interlinked somehow with her backsight and stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, she's really good with languages. Oh, yeah, they chat about um, bits and pieces about her cousin who yeah she's remembered was silent now, hasn't she yeah mm-hmm. but isn't anymore and she's kind of been removed from their family chain so they are mm-hmm. the night star family which yeah they had this massive business with all of the Psy making money for them mm-hmm. now her cousin faith was this huge cardinal f Psy mm-hmm. and earned them billions but she was removed from the family because she buggered off with a changeling pretty much yeah another book which books that do we know (laughs) it's an earlier one it's somewhere between two and twelve because I know it's not (laughs) that nearly narrows it because I've read one (laughs) I think I could have figured that one out (laughs) I don't think it was twelve I remember reading it it's very good Um, but yes so we learn about Mm. that and skin privileges and some more little bits come out that she she remembers she's not been silent for a long time and that shields have been in place and things were there to stop it but again Mm -hmm. yeah memory memory sort of drips through to her through things Mm. that happen through the book so he will do something so there's a bit where he's got a scar on his arm that he kind Mm -hmm. of periodically gets out to show her and kind yeah. of looks to her for things and yeah, yeah he it's hides drip it fed in from everyone from everyone he else he wears his sleeves down but when she's there yes. he he purposefully has it out and and he knows that when she sees it and she remembers he's he's pretty yes. sure she's gonna hate him and it's gonna trigger a memory that is awful you know you you get that sense it's it's really not great <laughs> you know the things yeah. that you're drip fed about this connection between them is from his perspective early in the book is you know he obviously wants to possess her he wants her to remember and to be herself but he equally knows that when she does he's going to lose her yeah yeah through that well this is it so when he does that I think he goes off and the next bit is her remembering Mm. something about who his actual yeah, I nearly said something. No, we'll give things away. <laughs> yeah, so he was taken under the wing by mm-hmm. this dude called Santano Enrique, who yes. was kind of his trainer and his guardian because he had such a high status of, mm-hmm. of his powers. He was a danger to yeah. everyone, even as a kid. So at three, mm. he was put under the wing of this dude and anybody who has these cardinal um, designations is removed from their families and they are put into places and they become what is called the arrows, usually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who are then trained to who we've such also a point. met. Yeah, we've met yes. some of the arrows. They're sort of answering to him now. They're a group that was put together, like you say. They're like the the most powerful ones who have really strong silence, and they they were originally there to protect that protocol. Um, but since everything's been changing with the council and problems are being discovered with silence they're no longer they're the last leader's gone and they're kind of answering to Caleb he's he's like moving in in, yes. in areas so the dude who ran them before is Ming and I think he was very secretive and he had very he had his agenda that he would not yeah. share with them and there's a group of these dudes who are all very highly skilled and they yeah. didn't trust it and there's mm. other stories there so yeah they've kind of affiliated themselves with Caleb on on the understanding mm-hmm. that we will do so what far. is right for us yeah and so everything far. else but, but yeah. they're they're proper cagey about I mean everybody yes. that comes across Caleb is kind of like they respect the power they are terrified of what he might do if he decides to turn on them kind of thing yeah so yeah yeah. he's at arm's length definitely from everybody yeah very even the really epic sigh even the epic sigh will kind of step away but yeah she learns that he is the protege of a um a known serial killer through the other books we find out that he has been taking changeling women Mm -hmm. and pretty much just dextering them He's I think been that was literally putting them the first to pieces, book, wasn't it? Because I knew that. I I think that's yes. all 
that all happens that they discover it about him and uh, you know I don't and, know if they know it's him. him in the first book I seem to remember him actually getting killed Ooh. in it so in the first, either well, that yeah, or I'm, I'm just like faking the memory in my own head maybe like, yeah maybe that happened yeah I'll just fill that in in my brain but I, I thought it did it, all you... happen because in that one it felt it would make familiar sense. yeah I yeah. I Definitely it, makes sense. Yeah, because it was the changeling, and the first book is a changeling and a sigh, isn't it, that come together because yes. of these, because of the missing changeling girl. So, yeah, he's he's been dead for quite a while. A while. Yeah, quite yes. a while. And everyone yeah, knows so, he was his protege. Um, yeah, but, but there's never no, any proof. Yeah, no evidence. That he helped him or was there or anything. Mm-hmm. Does she get that so, through some information that she reads? Yeah, so Rather she's than... he's gone off, so she's mooching mm. around, and I yeah. think it kind of she's all things are going on in her head. A memory hit, so she starts looking online. Yeah, mm-hmm. that there's something she needs to know, so she looks online and finds out that he is. Yeah, but she has no of this memory killer. of Enrique at that stage, does she? There's no, nothing no. there; it's just blank, and nothing still of Caleb at all. But she's no. just it's just information, isn't it, that she wants. But yeah, then rather than kind of be cagey or anything, he actually gives her a website to read everything yeah. up about. Yeah. It. And it's like, you don't want to know? Here you go. Because she's she's fully yeah. expecting him to come back and be like, had that, you know, get off of that. No information for you. Especially not when you're reading yeah. up that stuff. But no, he's just like, here's your own data pad. Here's the yeah. Wi-Fi password. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gold These dust, are your packages. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah um so yeah she goes and she asks him about it and he's like yeah he's just mm. the perfect creation of Sai. was he crazy eh, maybe but that's kind of what they made him but she does also have these thoughts as well she's starting to have these moments of thoughts when she's around him too even though she's hearing this bad stuff she's also kind of starting to get this sense that she's safe with him isn't yes. she I think is does yeah. it get unlocked at this stage? Like a first, I think it's around them where he kind yeah. of yeah it, he gives her I the think data the beginning pad and of this explains book it all. It's quite difficult because the the events, a lot of the events are these little snippets of stuff. These this tiny like changes to her mental state and gaining of information and her grounding herself there before she becomes fully there and fully knowing. They talk about this limbo period, don't they? Where she's quite calm and she's kind of getting this information. And but but it's like she's in a mental state of just repair. She just needs to be and yeah. rest and get yeah, her she body knows, back. Yeah. Yeah. She knows that there's stuff in there, but it's quite mm-hmm. she she obviously is aware that it's quite brutal. So mm-hmm. she kind of doesn't push too much to find yeah. it. But yeah, again, he he won't hurt me. That kind of in there. I know yeah. that much, even though I don't know what it is. Well, I this know that is he's it. never going to hurt me. But she's got this really strong feeling and conviction about, it, which is quite a feeling to have. And but what I also liked about it is that she is very she doubts it in herself. She's like, "Am I just feeling this because?" he's looking after me you know have I got these feelings because he's my captor but he's not being awful yeah. you know but, am I stuck but, home in? yeah but she's comparing it to her last experience of being captive and she never developed that kind of Stockholm syndrome thing there no. and they'd had ones that have tried that with her she even yeah, she, she remembers yeah yeah there's drip feeds of that isn't there that yeah. one did this and he was really attractive and young around my age yeah they it, like it, it mentioned did it mm. yeah she was taken at 16 yeah. that's that comes out that it's sort of a mention that at 16 she happened mm-hmm. to go into this place and that so her mind at the minute is perfect but when she went in at 16 it was obviously the mind of a 16 year old so they were yeah. able to sneak in and that is mm-hmm. why the labyrinth grew so big and so twisted yeah. because over the years she's tweaked yeah. and tweaked and tweaked and she didn't have the defenses necessary yes um, and even more so, so because of her silence because I think it was already not fully very there. fractured so we find out later though that even yeah well it wasn't her doing was it so, 
yeah but that's another thing for later but yeah. yeah so we go through bits and pieces with them and then there's another attack in Copenhagen um she yeah she stays obviously behind she can't do a huge amount and she mooches around the house a little bit and she finds mm-hmm. a, a koi pond which is yeah. really totally out of character for somebody who should be yeah the whole house silent. doesn't feel like it's a him the whole house yeah. feels warm and comfortable and she loves yeah. it um, apart from the office which apart is from very sterile the office and his bedroom which is the same yeah. that's it and like there's even like a library uh you know it, there's it hasn't been used it's full of books that have probably been read but he clearly doesn't use it it has no feel of that at all but yeah so he's there and he comes back and he kind of he mentions something about uh, there's a line in there that what was it it was 10 words I counted it and it's like yeah I'd I'd line the streets with bodies before I hurt you yeah and they have a chat about it and it's like reassuring yeah yeah what, what you dream of being told <laughs> sweet nothing yeah there. but Pretty yeah much. <laughs> so it's to the point <laughs> yeah and you don't realize how true it is until you get slightly further, until you further a bit but yeah yeah so yeah. yeah they kind of he comes back and they think they have a chat about stuff and he kind of mentions that he remembers when you went at 16 and she's like how how did you know that I was 16 yeah. he's like oh I read about it it's fine and she's like no I, I think there's only you're lying yeah there's only a couple of moments when he's a little bit fibby because he says later on that he 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 would never lie to her and it's just he he's just a bit cagey about some stuff when she wants absolutes about certain things very early on because she's kind of not ready and he knows she's not ready to remember she has to do it on her own yeah so there are just a a couple of moments but yeah so I think here she pushes him a little bit for things Mm. and I think this is where she so she has a bit of a panic attack she kind of starts pushing him for information about stuff when she's in the pond and he comes back and they have all this conversation and he's like why aren't you an arrow why aren't you over Mm. there how much are you like Santana what is going on and she's like you're you're not ready to hear all of this Mm. and it's like okay did we did we you know and he's like no I'm a virgin and yeah yeah. (laughs) all of these things start yeah it was a a bit of a drop in but at least he's on it well I mean to be fair um I think when we were talking before we kind of skimmed over it a little bit when they were talking about skin privileges but it was quite significant in a way because he'd gone out to sit with her when she'd been looking at this book and she she like invites him to sit on the sun lounger with her and obviously the, the thing with people who are silent is, as well, we haven't mentioned, there's no touching. As well as emotion, there's no touching. They don't even procreate by having sex. It's done in a lab, you know. Yeah, it's like, forms. Yeah, exactly. They, like, find the perfect genetic matches and, you know, test tube baby type thing. But she, she asks him to sit down and she's been held in captivity and her silence is broken and she's craving touch you know she needs comfort you know it's it, it's a big thing isn't it for mental health and she kind of snuggles up to him on the sun lounger and he just yeah, has to does. sort of you know she's like wrapping her arm around his waist and leaning her head on his shoulder and thing to to get that comfort so there's that yeah, going on the, as well there's this pull so isn't there? yeah this skin privileges of the changeling yeah. so they're, they're yeah. animals at heart mm-hmm. that yeah they they have certain levels of who can touch who at what stage yeah. and if you're mated then don't touch yeah. anybody that yeah. sort of stuff and he explains and, um, it to her and about faith exactly. and Vaughan I think is faith of the half yeah and she and she asks at that stage have you ever had skin privileges and he's like only once before yes. and no no not anymore which I get, I think that kind of is why it's not it's not quite such a drop into the conversation about the whole, um, you know, okay. about I'm a virgin. He's saying his silence hasn't been broken to that extent, <laughs> you yeah. know. He's not yeah. he's not gone there with that. I'm just jumping to the sex, mate. Yeah, yeah you're so, just yeah. <laughs> rushing to get there. <laughs> it's all about the Takes less time than the last it. book. <laughs> well, certainly, one, yeah, you good. get. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> Lots of They're tips. very good in this one. So much so that, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, she has a panic attack and you, you kind of see his, his changes here a little bit that he rushes her outside and he kind of, everything is barricaded to keep her safe, but also to yeah. keep her in. But mm-hmm. then he kind of shunts everything down. He shunts all the walls down. He's like, okay, yeah, this is, this is everything. You are kind of here and free. This is mm-hmm. your home. And she's yeah, like, she's, like, I think she yeah. was trying to get out and there was a security pad, wasn't there? And he's like, he, yeah. and she's literally scrabbled at the wall and made her fingers bleed. And he's like, have yeah. to show her, oh, you can, you know, you, I'll give you yeah. the codes. Outside. You can, Do you all can of be free when you can have it's... your own shield around your mind. You're not, you're vulnerable yes. at the moment. He can't, that's, that's what he says to her. It's like, I'll release you once you can protect yourself or be protected no he won't there's my simpsons moment (laughs) i'll get you beer baron no you won't but yes so we find out he he built the house and he gave it to her as a present for her 19th Mm. birthday yeah so yeah um that kind of unlocks a whole big heap of stuff how what why when why you build me a house? I don't even know you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think they try and start to have a chat about it. And then somebody appears, a dude teleports in. Yeah. And we see we see Uber Caleb because he just basically picks him up with his TK and smacks him into the wall. Like a, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a rag. Yeah. Yep. He recognises. Because, yeah, he does that to like just keep him back. And then it's very clear that she recognises him as one of her captors, as one of the guards or something. Um, so and there he's just nice like, one. right, I'm going to melt his brain now. And he we'll breaks break all the bones. Of his bones. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. But then, yeah, they kind of sit and I, I think, did they want to get into his head and see what was what? And he's like, no, I've squished it. So Yeah, it's like, I saw enough. I don't, yeah. he, he did, he extracted just about what he needed. So yeah, and we find out that she's full of trackers. They've they've yeah. Put them oh everywhere. god, that was awful. Yeah. Oh, there's one between her toes. Ooh, and, and oh, that one. Ow. ow. I mean, yeah, yeah they're Seriously. all bad. Even the one under the hip. Ouch. They yeah. put them in these awful places. Put yeah. these trackers in her, and he he has to get them out, and she lets uh-huh. him because she doesn't want to go to a medical facility does she I don't think she's he offers there's, there's, doesn't he yeah there's bits and pieces he's like I think you've got PTSD and she's like yeah probably and he's like she's like what are you going to do about it and he's like well I'll get you to the best doctors in the mm. world ever and she's like and she doesn't want I'm not no. ready for it yet no I don't no. want to yet because the way they do it because their size you know they'd have to have to go inside her mind to help yes. her because it's a mental illness the same way they do you know fancy futuristic stuff for healing too yes. yeah and she doesn't want that so they remove all of the trackers don't they yeah it's understandable yeah Get rid of those. but yeah so as they're going through all this i think there's again there's the memories and the familiarity and the connection there while he's mm-hmm. kind of going through and taking all this stuff out yeah and i think her backside kicks in and she's got a memory of being a kid walking mm-hmm. back from school yeah, yeah and yeah so she's got a mix bits and pieces going on we learn that she's mm. got this love of language but her silence is already fractured even yeah. as a young child yeah and then it comes back to it that she's sneaking into somewhere to see someone and then mm-hmm. this thing about her birthdays kicks in so yeah we find out that there's a charm bracelet I think before that happens when when she's when they've removed the trackers and she's, you know, in in a, I wouldn't say she's in pain, but she's in shock now because she doesn't even remember how to dull her pain senses, does she? He has to help her. He lays yeah, down with her and she asks him the question about whether he was involved in Enrique's murders. And he says he's that he was there for every minute of their torture. And she runs off to her room, terrified. And then it starts to kick in. She has this memory and she remembers about her, her charm bracelet. She remembers going crazy in her where she was held last time because someone tried to take it off of her. So they it. left her with it because it was just so detrimental to what they were trying to do. The process of trying to get into her mind. She just went so crazy when they tried to take it. It means so much to her. And it's kind of linked yeah. to that, isn't it? And then she goes in like my kids do at Christmas. She kind of puts her hand out and like, where are the others? 
Mm-hmm. Where are the where are the ones that are missing? The birthday ones that I've missed. There should be seven, and he has them all, and they all have relevance to different bits and pieces about her or about them in some yeah. way, shape, or form. So all the ones that are already on there obviously do as well. Mm-hmm. So I won't go through. Them I, I was going to say, I bet you wrote them all down. Of course, I've got them all written down. <laughs> Yeah. I, I have totally ignored things about the plotting and the, the progression <laughs> yeah, of the story, but, the but I've got a list, list of all the charms. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get you to read my next book for continuity stuff, for things Seriously, like that, because your I'm mind a... for the detail is right there. <sighs> um, yes. it's, a, it's, a, it's a dream team. I'm all about the overview. <laughs> yeah, and there's me looking at the, the, the obsidian you rock. You need yeah. both, absolutely. We, High five for the great team. Yeah. But yeah, so she's kind of like, I'm coming up to 24. What's next? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I've not decided that yet. Yeah. So um, yeah, there's just the fact that she's recognised that she would see him every year on her birthday. He would bring her a charm. So there's obviously this, this history between them, but she still can't grasp quite what it is. So, yeah, we kind of have that chat and then he needs to go somewhere. And I kind of love this bit that he knows he goes into check and before he leaves Mm. and she's kind of in a bed asleep and she's got a knife under her pillow that he make. He goes, he takes a wine shop every day for her and then puts it it back under the pillow. (laughs) It's like she's got that knife to protect her from you. And he's like, good on you, love. Make sure it's sharp. (laughs) Yeah. But is, these are my good guy bad guy moments it's kind of like oh that's really sweet but is it oh, <laughs> oh it's really sweet yeah it's like pestilence with his jam sandwich isn't it it's like oh. don't kill the family make her a jam sandwich oh, God. you're confusing you are confusing yeah. people yeah <laughs> Oh, welcome to episode seven, Jessica's issue with Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> why it's not there, why she has no issue. No, so yeah. Not. We're looking for somebody in the next bit. So Caleb, has, he's gone and check, checked her yeah. knife is still there and he's mm-hmm. on the lookout for somebody. He's on the lookout for another counsellor whose name is Tatiana. Tatiana. Um, who's, so, yeah. Yeah, what's her? She's a telepath, isn't she? So that's Yes, her, she's quite um, a strong telepath and mm. she can, yeah, wheedle into people's minds very, very effectively. Yeah. And it's taken all of these seven years to figure out where she is and that she is involved in yeah he's needed this, proof this he's thing. pretty sure she has been behind it but he yeah. doesn't really have he hasn't got the absolute proof that he needs before he acts and that now she, he's yeah yeah he, he now pretty he's much knows it. that she took sahara in the beginning and mm-hmm. that it was gifted to her this this mm-hmm. information about where this girl was and she took her so yeah he takes Tatiana away there's a, there's there's a bit of a conversation about him kind of going in and trying to get the information he needs out of that and then you yeah. know how good her power is because she's nearly got through yeah, all of his yeah. shields and he's got and like kind of uber shields I mean it, yeah, yeah it's mentioned the only reason he keeps his shield from being absolute is to maintain contact with the net all the time like constantly he's got information running through his head yeah even while and, sleeping yeah he, 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 earlier on he sets he sets his internal alarm doesn't oh, he? like, i'm gonna have five yeah. hours sleep that's all yeah. i need and like, I'm like, oh my god on the dot. that that only works when you're going to the airport doesn't it <laughs> when you go to yeah. bed and you're like i must get up or christmas must... eve yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christmas Eve or Christmas. Well, yeah, yeah. A minute. You've got to get up on time. <laughs> so, yeah, but he can do that kind of thing all the time. So yeah, he's you know, he's able to do all this stuff. And while while because he's he's like slammed her out of her chair or up against the wall when she's when he knows it happens and yes. she's like she's in pain but she's still trying to go for it she's still trying to get yeah. like the little worm inside his head to to penetrate and like control him I guess take control or incapacitate yeah, him I don't know well this is the thing but you every single person who is sigh who kind of gets attacked you always see as soon as he's there and he gets them mm. 
as mm. soon as that moment hits, they fear him and you see their mm. silence just drops. Yeah. So even these high counsellors who are supposed mm-hmm. to be the perfect side, yeah. as soon as they're put into any yeah. slight situation, they just it's drop just, it all. Everyone's just pretending, aren't they, really? Yeah, Goodness. pretty much. But yeah, I did quite, I find it quite ironic that, yeah, he drops her into Santano's old playroom. So here we oh, go. Yeah. Yeah, and he's and kind of he. It's oh, it's perfectly fitted and everything. It's nice. oh, it sounds awful. It just it's just yeah. like a cement cement box buried underground. Yeah, and that, like, yeah, and everything can drain. There's like a table with rivets in, so things can drain off it. And it's like mm-hmm. oh, you know what that's gonna be. Oh, I know the gullies and things. Yeah, because he doesn't want to kill her because that no. would be too. Kind. That's too easy. She, you know, she mm-hmm. tortured Sahara for seven years. He wants to repay it in kind and worse. But yeah, he knows everything that he can do that won't kill her, that will cause Mm -hmm. a slight infection that's not enough. So he dislocates all the joints that can be dislocated and he breaks fingers and toes and he Mm. leaves her with this crappy little medical kit so she can just about keep herself going. And there's, there's these little moments as well when he mentions stuff about so like when he dislocates her knee and she passes out, doesn't she? Like when it first happens and he's like, I, I had worse when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get these little hints of how he was treated when he was being, you know, from the age of, I think was it? Uh, yeah. Well, he started at three and then there's yeah. seven mentioned as well. But I think yeah. it's a dual thing because it's stuff that was done to Sahara as well. Yeah. So he's doing kind things of- to the yeah he dislocates Tatiana's knee for that reason but when he's thinking about it and she and he's it's seeing a, yeah. her deal with the pain he's like oh you I know I dealt well. with worse pain than that when I was but a kid. I was seven yeah. yeah I knew how to put my shoulder back in when I was that age because I was always being treated like that it's awful yeah. just the and it's just dropped yeah. in really like matter yeah, just like conversation oh I'm nipping to Costa this. today <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> I'm dislocating my shoulder again. Yeah. But yeah, so he does that and she, yeah, he just leaves her there. And mm-hmm. like, when are you coming back? What are you going to do? He's like, eh, we'll see. But then he goes back and she kind of, she she's sat reading mm. and she knows that he's wrong. So there's just something, yeah. it's not yeah. right at all. He's, you know, yeah, he's, he's ragey. I mean, yeah, that's don't the touch sense. me, don't stay by me right now. I am yeah. not like, good. What people take for silence, Sahara sees as him shutting down. So I think that's like something they recognise in each other. It's kind of what she's gone through. But I think she's always had that level of empathy. And when he's going through something really dark, he will just completely shut down and he gets so much more cold and so much which yeah. shouldn't even be possible <laughs> you no. know? it's amazing yeah, so he goes that way and sh- her compassion still comes out it's yeah mm-hmm. I it's you know good. on a side note what amazed me as well I was thinking of I don't, I don't know when you're writing stories but how much I use you know how you're always meant to use like a lot of showing language to show how yeah, don't tell how characters are you know how they're feeling and stuff and you when you're writing a character that doesn't show emotion there's so little range of what you can write you know I think he smiles like twice in the heart yes. and, and once yeah. is on purpose to scare someone <laughs> and once is genuinely and like and like even a shrug is like on purpose there's, there's like no that that was hard I don't know she must have had to edit so much out because yeah. I just write that stuff in all the time they're like always doing that stuff sighing yeah. and shrugging the shoulders and running their hands through their hair and things but I was gonna say yeah I suppose he doesn't even when you think about it, yeah he doesn't even clench fists and stuff he does yeah, his emotions are there when you show them, but but I mean that's why it's ways. amazing. Not by doing anything physical. Yeah, you get it. You know what's mm. going on, and you get a sense of him as a character. And I feel like I need to reread it just for that to figure out how yeah. that's been done. <laughs> because yeah, there's not. It just goes to show you don't have yeah. to show in exactly all the same sort of ways to you yeah. know to make it fit. There's no one way. 
to do it the right way. This is really effective. So I did. Uh, I shouldn't giggle at this bit, but I did because the darkness are back. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so she can see the darkness is there yeah. and it's kind of in him. It's all consuming. So yeah. what is the best way to pull somebody out of their little funk? Well, see, this well. reminded me of last week's book because mm -hmm. it was a similar thing. You know, you're in mm -hmm. the forest. He's in a trap. He's, he's letting his demons out. How does she pull him back? Kisses. Kisses. Mm. Magical kisses. Oh, yes, the boys. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah, in theory, he shouldn't respond to that at all because no. silence. But he no. does. He goes mm. in. He goes hard. Go hard or go home, Caleb. And and he yeah, kind of he does goes... it for. He's thinking he needs to do it to like placate her, doesn't he? He's like, oh, I know she needs this. I'll do this thing, even though you know he he obviously wants to possess her but it's not he's not doing he's not kissing her because he wants to kiss her yeah. in his in the forefront of his mind in the back of his yeah head, in the back fair. of his mind it's yeah. porn hub come but, on but the back of his mind is like whoa that's the void is <laughs> yeah like, uh -huh. the, the real caleb is in the void <laughs> it's in, it's the, in the back in the spoiled milk yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> You're yeah. way below the gutter. And whoa. Yeah. It's um, but yeah, so oh, it's there's quite big the epic first kisses. Kiss. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah, big kisses, smoochy smoochies, and then there's a big old crack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the earth literally does move because mm -hmm. yeah, is it the the room is absolutely trashed, trashed and there's a big yeah. crack up it and the floors is everywhere. Rippled. The floors <laughs> rippled and they stop, don't they? And it's like all the glass has sh like got the hairline fractures, and then yep. it's like they can't help themselves. Like he's in it now; he's not just pretending. It's very clear she realizes it, and they can't help themselves, and they kiss again, and then that's it. Smash all yep. the glass goes, and he teleports yep. her out. Mm -hmm. yep. Good guy moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. good guy moment. So yeah, I think where are we? So the room is trash, and it's like after a kiss, mm -hmm. damn. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they clean everything up. He fills her in on the sign net issues after that I've got. So yeah. they kind of have a chilled out moment. They're, they're past his darkness. He's kind mm -hmm. of coming back to himself and he kind of lets her know about it. And she kind of already cottoned on that it's rotting mm -hmm. from the inside out because of the people who were there. The sign yeah. breaking down the net. Yeah, she's having these conversations with her and she's very quick on the uptake. She puts yeah. things together quite fast. Is this when they go to the... I think this is about the second time they go to the beach, isn't they it? They go to the beach, yeah. So yeah, yeah when she has these moments uh, that mm -hmm. she doesn't, she can't control, he takes her to this yeah. isolated beach and she just sits yeah. there. So yeah, when she kind of gets to that next moment mm -hmm. of realising that the net is eating itself, he kind of ports yeah. her way to the beach and gives her time to sit and think. And she um, kind of thinks about... Yeah, she's... I, th I think she's recognizing that she's got this pull to him at this stage and that it's clouding her judgment. She can't quite get a grasp on herself yeah. properly because she's, she's, just, she's just obsessed. You know, now she's had the kissing and stuff. She's just like, you know, I'm not going to be able to concentrate living in the house with him. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, she needs a break. Yeah. Even though she loves the house, she can't be there mm -hmm. now. It's not the yeah. right time to be there. So she goes to see her dad. She wants to go stay with her dad. Yeah, so she has to ask him, doesn't she, if he will do that and everything in him doesn't want you're that. Mine. Yeah, you're mine. Mine. Mine, you must stay. But she, she appeals to the fact that he said he'd never do anything to hurt her and to keep her there would be to hurt yeah. her. She needs to go back and be back where she was before he was taken so she can remember who she was properly and reconnect and see her dad you know because she's admitted that she never had a distant father like a lot of Sai do anyway that they had a, yes. a nice relationship they had a you know I was I wouldn't have said a loving relationship because they wouldn't have been allowed to identify it as such yeah but so you have to kind of agree and 
does he does he put the shield up for her he keeps her under his shield or is she just about yes. managed yeah that's about it isn't i think it? he's yeah he, she's still under the shield then and yeah i think yeah this is his epic power we see that and then they're at the because mm. they're still at the beach before he takes her and then he starts pulling the tides in and sending oh, the waves yeah. mental you see you it kind you, of, see, you see his like, power mm -hmm, this yeah elemental force and it's one of the things she was reading up about about him wasn't it when you were learning about him being the cardinal was that he you know he he's so epically powerful he can cause earthquakes and things like that you know it's it's not to be trifled with no you can see why people kind of step back a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah so he agrees he takes her and yeah she kind of even though she's there and she's ready they go to the garden don't they she's like yeah. i will call you if i need help yeah and they keep like, yeah. the the link the telepathic link is always yeah is there and he takes her up to the door and then he just kind of melts away doesn't he when her dad yeah. comes out and recognizes her straight away which i think yeah, is lovely all that time. yeah they never stop looking did they it's kind of yeah the sigh and who yeah, they are yeah. and the the so anthony is her uncle and mm -hmm. anthony was one of the counselors and her um sahara's dad is leon who is anthony's brother and they're so, yeah, the so night we... star clan yeah and they're quite um protective yeah so she goes well, yeah back. and dad rushes up and hugs her yeah yeah nice. and she's like hang on you're hugging me because again not really side behavior and he's like yeah you know i've it's changed me i lost a child and it yeah. changed me and so his mm -hmm. he doesn't have the silence and she's worried about that because to be seen without silence means that they need to be reconditioned ordinarily yeah. in the society and she doesn't want to be reconditioned obviously because that would mean losing herself and having people yeah, in her head yeah so the other way is like with faith so faith has been removed from the family yeah that's it if you're gonna if you want to stick that way then you get ostracized basically yes from the family. well kind of keep kind reading of. well Jim. this is it keep exactly. listening mm -hmm. well that was definitely the situation when she was abducted but yes it's not necessarily the situation anymore Mm -hmm. but yeah so we get a little snippet of we've not mentioned it much because i don't think it has relevance to what we need to discuss but there's a snippet about the arrows chatting about caleb and pure yeah. sigh so mm -hmm. it's sort of dropped in between the chapters there are like snippets and cutouts from papers yeah um, sort of saying what's happening at all of these attacks that some people mm -hmm. are agreeing with the pure sigh that they're trying to bring yeah. silence back and help out the the side mm -hmm. community and others are agreeing with other people that they need to do something because they can't keep living like this yeah and we actually get little snippets of the dude who runs pure sigh mm -hmm. yeah just little a couple of jumps there. into his yeah just little jumps into what he's thinking about mm -hmm. what he's going to do how he's going to attack whether or not caleb is somebody who should help him out yeah because yeah, he is. seems to be the perfect definition of silence, especially yeah. being Santano's protege. So, mm -hmm. uh, again, in past books, we find out that Pure Sai was run by an ex counselor because he's dead yeah. by the name of Henry Scott. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he was removed because of his epically, weirdly fanatical ways. Yeah. But yeah, so it's run by this dude called Vasquez, I want to say. Vasquez, I think. Yeah. Mm, not sure yeah um yeah the pure side dude pure so, side dude um, <laughs> i'm gonna stick yeah. with because it, it's i just don't want to get it wrong yeah i don't want so to get the, it wrong i don't know how no. to pronounce that exactly right so yes um it always annoys me if people get my name wrong or spell it wrong so i'm not <laughs> going to do it to anybody else but yeah so we get little snippets into his head and then we yeah. see into the arrows and they're like okay is caleb just he's always on the scene when all of these attacks are yeah. happening and he's pulling people out of the wreckage and they're kind of yeah. like is he involved is he not and involved can we trust him and that's the thing even when you're in caleb's point of view when he goes there he even makes these ambiguous comments in yes. his narration or you know it's it's third person point of view but obviously it's from his perspective that he's like 
I, I don't need to talk to the journalists because they've all seen what I've done here and that will speak volumes. Yeah. You know, it's clear that he knows in his cold clinical way, he's always assessing how it affects his position and what he's trying to influence. And I think we're kind of, well, we know now that he wants control of the net, doesn't yes. he? Yes. He yeah, wants, he to, take wants control. to take over ultimate and, cosmic power um well this is it do we do we find do we realize at the minute he wants to shut it down he wants to end silence yeah and so there's yeah, nobody's a lot of sure what it is opinions there's a lot of unrest between people it's very divided it's all brexity you know that sort of thing <laughs> some people think yes some people think no no one knows quite what his motivations are okay well, this is the thing. So I think when he drops Sahara with a dad, he goes to mm. Anthony and kind of puts himself forward to say, yeah, I did this. I saved her. And Anthony's like, OK, you obviously yeah. want something for all of this. Then. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, again, there's all those little build ups for it. Mm. And you're like, again, yeah. What do you want? Do you want this? Do you want that? And he's like, I've looked into the future with you in it. And it's, mm. yeah. All I see is death and darkness. Oh, that's what Faith says, isn't it? Yeah, when uh, that that was what he heard from her, wasn't it? Yeah. It's just darkness, destruction. Yeah, you at the future. But I mean, for someone who has that kind of level of ability, I guess destruction's kind of a given. It's, you know, a, a telekinesis power. That but that destroys. does make sense that when they do trash the sign net, that's what they get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and all he says, because uh, they keep it, it's always been a secret and that's something that's kind of triggering to her for this labyrinth and her memories is that she knows that they always kept their relationship a secret and she still does it. She automatically does it. They don't want to give away this. Yeah, she, she says it was just a challenge. That's why he did it to try and find her, even though she knows that's not the reason now. And yeah, he he just kind of goes along with that and he's like, well, I, I, I'd I like the Nightstar clan to owe me a favour kind of thing. It's good. I'd like to be able to call upon you to support me if I want the net. And they're like, Some and thing. Anthony's, he comes across quite a strong character. I'm guessing he's been around and about in other yes. books. And he's kind of like, well, you know, we won't oppose you. And that's about as much as I can say, you know, that's yes. as far as I'll yeah, go. That'll do for now. Yeah. <laughs> be angry yourself we're grateful we're not that grateful so yeah <laughs> come on so yeah um I think we jump back to her and we have a little mm. bit of sexy times here that she's kind of at this house now and he's feeling a bit trapped yeah there. I think she stays one night doesn't she and then she has yeah. kind of her day there sort of settling in and then that night she's really antsy and I called it the telepathic booty call she gives him ah, basically yeah, <laughs> she's yeah. like, Ding she's like she just wants him to come because she feels like she's coming out of her skin doesn't she and yeah and she, she tries skin to privileges. yeah she she like basically launches herself at him and he's like hang on no go put some warm clothes on <laughs> yeah we're going for a, <laughs> yeah. a climb yeah mm. he teleports her out to this massive rock <sighs> face but it is what she needs it's very good yeah she needs you know? to she needed to burn off some energy. Blow off some steam, yeah. Yeah, wasn't quite enough <laughs> to stop to stop the um, the urges. <laughs> yeah, that's well, still... that's it. It doesn't stop his because he drops her home and then has to bloody go back again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because, yeah, they come down, don't they? They come down from the rock face after they've climbed and had that time and, yeah, and they indulge in some more kissy, smoochy, touchy, touchy stuff. Second, second base. But he can't, he can't do it because you know he's gonna yeah. he's gonna he cause an avalanche. Control, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's like no, no, nothing more can happen. He has to slam on his shields and things, and he takes her back. And then yeah, he has to go back. He climbs again to, to climb like about three times. He has to go yeah. up this, this yeah, the equivalent place. of a cold shower. Yeah, bless him. Exactly. I think it's at least it's not. Oh, and of course, that does have to be mentioned. No baths in this one, only showers. Oh. No, it's all showers. So, yeah, um, we're back with Sahara in her house and she gets mm. one of those feelings because it can't be a book without getting a feeling and she wakes up yeah. and she knows something, somebody's there and she's like, okay, is it dad? 
Is it dad yeah. milling around the house? And yeah, mm-hmm. it's not dad. No. Um, so yeah, she sends out like a, a summons and she like, dad, is it you? No response mm. from whoever is in her room. Yeah. And yeah, so luckily she has old Mr. Stabby. Yeah. She's she's and, ready. Uh, she's prepared. She so pumps she stabs up him. Her, her bed, doesn't she? So that it looks like she's still in it. Finds yeah, behind she the shuts door. things up. Yep. Yeah. So she stabs him and then calls Caleb, who comes in. I don't think she like, calls him. I think he just comes because he has a go at her later for saying, why didn't you call me? Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe. When they're, ha- when they're having a, th- a three-way difficult, three-way conversation between yeah. her. Don't no, say no, that. Not, th- not a three-way. <laughs> that doesn't happen in this book. Other books no, not are in this available one. where that happens, but not in this one. Give, DM um, me. I know a few. Yeah. <laughs> um, Will Harper is fantastic for them. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. When Anthony comes and they're discussing what's what's happening and the fact he's there and stuff like that, I think they have a bit of a, yeah, he has a moment where he's like, why didn't you call me to come? Oh, my brain just skips that. It's like, she's there shouting, he comes. And yeah, she's like, don't kill I him, think... don't kill him, don't kill him. Yeah. Times, Which of, kind... times of excitement. I'm like a puppy. I'm just kind of like, <gasps> And I get, and that's a re- repeated thing as well, isn't it? With the, even the first guy that came, she was like, "Yeah, don't kill him." And he's like, "He, he hurt you. He Too will late. die. Too late. Yeah. Brains out of his ears." And when we forgot, they had the conversation about Tatiana, and he explained what he'd done to her and yeah. what he was intending to do. And she's like, "Don't do that. <laughs> it's yeah, not. That's right. not you." Don't yeah, this become isn't you. Yeah, and he and he was like, I have no empathy. There's no point asking me yeah. not not to do things like that. I was raised but by a monster. Not I am up. a monster. Then she's like, No, you can't. Don't torture her. And he's like, Yeah, all right, that's that's fine. I'll agree to that. It's like a negotiation. Yeah, all the time, yeah like fingers crossed. Like <laughs> well, you yeah. say, don't do this. What, what do you class this to as me? Torture? Yeah, yeah I know. You know. And so then again, a little. Yeah, with with the the guy that's come in as well, he slams him up against the the wall again. He liked doing that, didn't he? He I does. Guess it's handy. Pins him. Pins him there. Mm. But yeah, her dad, he whoever this dude is, before he got to Sahara, he's got to her dad. So she yeah. she rushes in to find him, and mm. yeah, he's not in a good place. So Caleb, no. good guy, comes in, mm-hmm. puts him straight out, and I think he's back. And dad's already in surgery by the time he's come back. Yeah, I mean, blimey, so, it's, it's quick response for all that stuff. It, I mean, yeah. say what you like about silence, but their systems in terms of. NHS and stuff is good. I was just gonna say, um, <laughs> yeah, okay, like you know, you, but yeah, so they realize, I think, I, I don't, Anthony's there, and they realize mm. that nobody knew that she was with her dad other than a few people. So, yeah. the Night Star clan has a leak, and mm. Anthony is super pissed because they've always kept loyalty is their thing, yeah, which and- we then figure out with the next bit because of where she ends up going yeah yeah and also the thing with the guy is that because obviously um Tatiana's out of the picture um Enrique's dead Ah. (laughs) so but they figure out that it he put a bounty on her if she was ever to escape she's that valuable whatever it is she can do is that valuable that they would not want her to escape is even yeah so even though he's dead there's still this money in deposit for people and that's why someone's gone after her with the leak in Nightstar so yeah um we then find out that Anthony yeah he values his loyalty so he's well Mm. pissed and then they figure out the best place to put her is with somebody who they will never expect her to be with which is Mm. Faith yeah because yeah the family are supposed to not speak to her anymore yeah She's supposed but to be outcast, do. isn't she? But, you know, yes. it's it's only official. But they still chat, clearly. Of course they do. Yeah, so Anthony is Faith's dad. And, yeah, yeah, he speaks to her all the time. Skypes, you know. You don't even need to Skype head to head. So they go to Faith lives in Packlands. She lives mm-hmm. with one of the Changeling crews because her mate is... Vaughn. 
So um, yeah, she she goes there. She it's night time, isn't it? And yeah, I think Faith runs up and hugs her. And yeah, she's back to her and she's oh sorry, and she's like yeah, it's not really it, is it? Because I think they were yeah, yeah, they were kind of friends as cousins, but neither one could do yeah. That, much yeah, it's been explained it and, that when so quite often people with future sight. Uh, a slow to speak and they put her with Sahara because of her backside yeah she's like amazing with languages and she was very vocal and she was younger so they put them together to try and help and they they had this relationship which should have been a friendship but it couldn't be because of the silence and yeah, now they so don't they... have the silence no so it's nice it's like, oh, yeah. they can have hugs yeah. and chats and be lovely. Yeah. Yes. And it's so, yeah, still we have... got the, all of the powers. So it's like, what are you losing, really? You know? Yeah, it's win win. Bong it. But yeah, <laughs> so I thought it was quite sweet that they go and they chat and they, they give her mm. an eerie. So they give her her own little yeah. space that she's never they had sound before. Amazing. They, they, do, they sound they've amazing. got little mechanical rope ladders that wind yeah. down for you. Yeah. But I thought it was really sweet that they chat and Vaughn's there and Faith's there and they bring her like a little food package. And then when they book yeah. her off, as soon as they've gone, she's like, Caleb. Caleb, yeah. And I, Come on she's like, I want to leave so I can think. And as soon as she's on her own at any point, Caleb. she's like, where's Caleb? <laughs> come, come, do you want to see my nice house? And she's a little bit worried, isn't she? Because she's like, yes. do you like it? And, and she says, yeah. But I, I really love your place too. It's just yeah. that you built for me. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll you, get there. I might have been dead. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I'm not there yet. I need my own space. Yeah, yeah I'll get there. But I want you in that space at the same time, please. <laughs> yes, preferably naked. Mm -hmm. I think it goes quite dark again here that they chat a little bit. And so Santano has had him since he was three. And he's yeah. basically been in his head since then. And he's put mm -hmm. a lead around his head so he can control absolutely yeah. everything. And there are little little back doors that he created to sneak in and out. And yeah, basically just anything that you can think to do, he did to him. To pain yeah. wise to try and break him to be yeah. a, his puppet, basically. Like his protege. Yeah. It's um yeah, this choke leash that would control yeah dampen his powers so he couldn't use his powers against him as they got yeah. stronger he couldn't even speak to tell anyone what was happening because it would you know make his brain bleed and yeah and just basically torturing him and then as he got older when he was seven wasn't he seven when he was shown the first yeah the um, first image the first murder that when it was happening mm. 16 he said when it was yeah he said he went away in his head, so they left. He he'd left it a while, and then that's when Caleb just decided it was easier not to feel anything rather than yeah. to be in terror and pain all the time, which was why he just dampened everything down completely. Yeah, all of his receptors are gone. Mm. But yeah, so sixteen was his first murder. Yeah, um, yeah. and he, I mean. It was in his hand and he was used like a puppet, basically. Yes. It was. Yeah. So, know. in theory, it, he didn't do it. Santana no. was in his head doing yeah. it through him. Yeah. And it's clear he feels like he did do it because, I mean, he was there and he witnessed yeah, he, it he was. and he was, his body was doing it. So, he feels yeah. responsible. And Sahara is very clear to him that no, you're as much a victim of that. You know, because yeah, you're not, anyone else. Yeah, you're not but, responsible for being controlled it, in that way. Yeah. But his logic is is to me it was like, you know, I was the face that she saw. Yeah. That her oh. last moment was me. Yeah. Um, yeah Doesn't blood on my hands else. with a scalpel. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Exactly. But it starts to make a bit more sense with a lot of the things he's been saying about being a monster himself and stuff like that you know he is clearly looking at himself in a hard way and doesn't have any sympathy for himself despite what he no. has been through it's oh, yeah it's bless. pretty dark that bit mm -hmm. yeah so i think this is where we jump to as you would you jump to nakedness <laughs> it's amazing how these bits go together isn't it 
so yeah, yeah there's kissing and there's trying <laughs> to get him back and bring him back yeah and then yeah they're gonna bone but it can't be at her house it has to be at his yeah and they get jiggy with it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. What more can you say? <laughs> I know. Well, this is it. It's like, it's such big parts of the book sometimes, but you find that, don't you? It's like, well, what, what can you say? It's like, yeah. you know. Well, you, you find out about his porn thing, that he's been, he's been a, the perfect student. That he, so he's yeah. watched everything. So he knows exactly what to do. And but It happens afterwards, and that, doesn't it? When she's like, when they've had, they've had the sex. And, and everything like that and then it's afterwards and she's a bit like so how did you know how to do that because he's clearly quite good <laughs> yeah. Like... yeah obviously she comes first because that's kind of how it has to be yes yeah and and she's she's a little bit worried about it isn't he? he's like well I did research <laughs> and he's like and she's like well how did you do the research you know she gets a bit jelly beans doesn't she and um and then yeah, it's it's his porn hub. He shows yeah, her his, he, his he mental sends all the images, and she then like holds onto the cupboard and goes, "Okay, fucking hell, Whoa. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just give me a minute." Yeah, I'm still sore after yesterday, dude. <laughs> so yeah, that was very good. Mm. But yeah, oh, it's really sad. He's kind of they wake up next to each other, and he's like, "We shared DNA. That's that's not good." <laughs> Yeah. And she's like, no, it's okay. I went and got it checked over mm. beforehand. And he's like, well, yeah, you probably best not to take my DNA anyway. Yeah. They, they dispute it and argue it. And then he kind of drops the bombshell that mm. I don't know if I was expecting it, but it's been so long since I read it. But yeah, we find out that Santano wasn't just his guardian. Yeah. He was actually his dad. Mm. He kind of think- manipulated all the files to say, for me, it was a strange thing that because I think I think we talked about it before and I didn't feel it was of massive significance in terms of turnout. It, it wouldn't really have made that much difference. No, so no. The because, only thing I yeah. think is his is that is his fault of his own genes, like it's in his genes. Yeah, he's but never I going think, to escape it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that he's got, a, you know. He's got it in him to be like that, you know, to yeah. be a, a psychopath, a serial killer. But because, yeah, the, yeah, what they put in place, the story that was there, the, the parents mm-hmm. that created him were both at certain levels, one of TK, one of a telepath, and these mm-hmm. things can happen that the two will merge yeah. in a certain way and create yeah. this epic thing. Recessive doesn't genes, happen, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it still would have held. Uh, yeah, that's it. I just... Yeah, I think that's the only point to it is just that it gives him this conviction that even even if he behaves differently, it's still in him, you know, even that now Enrique's gone, he's not really gone because he's still yeah. inside him, you know. And he didn't believe it. He tested it like 10 times, didn't he? <laughs> he was yeah, like, yeah, just double- no, don't let it be true. But it was yeah. true. I, I was like the first time you're pregnant. I've peed on six <laughs> sticks, but I just want to be sure. Yeah. And then when you go to the doctors and go, oh, I think I'm pregnant, they're like, have you done a test? I'm like, yeah. Uh, He's like, oh, you're yeah. fine then? He's like, well, will you not do a test? Because you're a doctor. You'll tell me properly. It's like, nah, yours is probably <laughs> better than mine will be. So. Yeah. We believe you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the next thing we jump to is an attack at a university in Denver, which is... Yeah. A quite a progressive place because it has the mixes of all three races there kind of living quite happily together yeah yeah so, but yeah there's yeah. been a lot of political discussion there and which way it's swayed and that's why they've targeted this place yeah yeah so but the problem that they have is that Caleb turns up and mm. so he's the side the paramedics all turn up a young changeling student comes out mm-hmm. and he's got an epic sense of smell and he's like I can tell you where to look for the bodies if you can bring them out. And then you get human paramedics come in and help out with everyone. And then the journalists notice that all Mm. three are banding together. So, yeah, Pure Sai is not the big thing that will fix everything because it's already working. That's it. Yeah. He thinks about how he hasn't seen them come together in that way. And it's... And, and he's even assessing that as it happens. He's like, okay, well, how will this make Pure Psy react then if, 
you know, they they see that we're banding together. That's not in their interest. They don't want to see that. What are they going to do to drive a wedge in between all of the different races and things, isn't it? Yeah. So we do sort of then, after all that sort of winds down, we jump to yeah. our pure side dude and he is pissed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, he's kind of like... You know, it wasn't his, it was just like a little site, wasn't it? And he was trying to do something with it, but. Yeah. And it's clear uh, in, in that bit, he's thinking about how he wants the other races to be obedient to them and stuff, isn't it? Oh it's... yeah. Pure sire, the sire, the best. Yeah. We're they're, number one. they're the superior race, blah, blah, bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. Stuff. Oh, that, that's him. not, <laughs> that's not an indication of the writer, by the way. That wasn't. That. It's just that <laughs> no, just the, just the man. Just make that clear. I'm just talking yeah. about idiots yeah. that have those kind of feelings. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, is it this? I think I don't know if it's this one or one of them. He goes. So we mentioned Henry at the beginning, who ran it mm. before him, and he yeah. goes to his grave. Yeah. So yeah. even this dude who was running pure <laughs> sigh has all of yeah. these thoughts going around his head, and he can't speak to anybody else in his organization yeah. about them because obviously yeah. emotions are not sigh. Mm. So he goes to the grave where Henry is, and he yeah. gets all of these emotions off his chest to a mm-hmm. corpse because you know he can yeah. and it's like pop yeah. and kettle dude come on yeah they just how can you not see this is what you're doing yeah yep so um yeah so caleb comes home and i think he's a bit knackered because he spends when he goes he spends like the day digging yeah. people out of these buildings and stuff and she links to him doesn't she while he's doing it telepathically yeah just and uh, i thought that was quite she doesn't a, talk no she just, just she just there. sees to know he's okay and I think he's aware isn't he and it's just yes, so you can not, feel her there yeah he's not alone because there's a big thing that she hates about seeing him is just how alone he is he's always in like a dark corner oh, isn't he whenever yeah. they go anywhere and do anything he kind she of moves she says to, the back. to him when he when he stands away from her and he's like against the night sky she'll go like just come over here because i just hate yeah, seeing out of you the dark. on your own yeah there's a few yeah. of those in there mm. oh. but i think he comes back and he asks her to come to sleep to be with him and then they have telekinetic sex <laughs> yeah i even wrote that down he's kind of he's all on the cock wings he kind of he puts they like all, yeah yeah they he all kind of uses his telekinetic yeah, hands lovely, yeah it's like he's got like four hands with his telekinesis yep. all in strategic places <laughs> and it's yeah. like wow I you suppose. don't need a three-way with caleb nope <laughs> uh, there'd be no- nothing for anyone else to do he's got it yep. all covered <laughs> mm-hmm. seriously and, and then yeah so they do it and then the bed starts to lift in the yeah. room yeah it's, like, oh. Oh, it's, it's crazy it's crazy sex is it I after that it. time and she's like there's been a reported earthquakes yeah. and things and she's like the scientists yeah. are really going to be I'm scratching their be... heads around yeah. here because there's all these tremors that are happening where it's like he has to displace all this power yeah, all this energy, energy that he doesn't have control of because he's you know he's losing it um, but this is it because he's got yeah. um his brain in so many places so yes. he's on the sign it he's monitoring this he's talking to his aide silver he's he's monitoring yeah. all of the things <laughs> the dark net this that he's concentrating mm-hmm. on her he's creating four hands and his power yeah. is just infinite and just yeah. goes when he kind of he loses his yeah his focus the one and it moment goes of, everywhere yeah. of release when he lets all his all his guard down yeah yeah and that's oh, it. That's how it, yeah, that's how it gets displaced with smashing yes. up furniture and earthquakes that he buries. He's like, I was careful. So he even yeah, thinks he puts about deep, it when he it. does it. He's like, it was just deep. It was underground. No one's hurt. I'm trying to think what happens now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. This is where he's, he's kind of, they chat a little bit and yet yeah, more memories creep in. And yeah, yeah, this is where they chat about silence having to fall. Caleb goes takes the bounty off her so she's safe she goes back yeah. to the eerie and sasha from the first book sasha duncan mm-hmm. yeah who is i can't remember yeah so she's helped her restore her shields mm-hmm. and she can then he can step away 
he drops yeah. it and she goes into the net and I think he shows her around and they see the decay. And yeah. I think this is where they say Sinet has to fall. And then she's um, like, there's going to be collateral. And yeah. he's like, okay, well, that, that will have to happen. The people who aren't focused and enough and who mm. are not respecting yeah. silence will. And she's like, but that's then me. Yeah. Yeah. He takes her to that place, doesn't he? That's a place that no one else has seen. And he's, he's like built a big red button, but he's built it himself, hasn't he? He's made yeah, it. Yeah. And she's like, well, this is what you were going to use to kill everybody if she had died, if she'd been taken away from him and he couldn't ever get yeah. her back. He decided he was just going to kill everybody. That's, you know, quite a decision to make. I was as well. I said, but nobody under 16 or the children. And will then you put in an algorithm. It's, yeah, I decided not under 16. Uh, so it's a little little bit, I suppose. Mm. Good um, guy, bad guy. Good, mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, not going to kill all the kids. I'll just leave them all here by themselves with all these yeah. dead you can, adults. You can imagine him and Pestilence having a chat. Well, you're yeah. leaving all the children without parents. <sighs> so, you yeah. know. Have you read Lord helpful? of the Flies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. He's he's moved on to it just being, well, silence needs to fall. There's something broken. And yeah, she's, yes. she's not happy. He's, she's like, you've got to find a different way. And he's like, well, yeah, of course I'm going to find it because you rely on it and I'm here to protect you. Yes. It is the ultimate morality chain romance, isn't it? Yeah. It is. In my favourite. Yeah. But yeah, she's going to, yeah, she's going to fight for him. He'll fight yeah. for her. It's nice. Oh. But yeah, I've got a memory here. Mm-hmm. I think is this where lots of the memories come in? Yeah, a big snippet of everything. Loads of them start coming in because her shields are down. Mm. So she's, yeah, we kind I, of slip she's had through a few more of, them. of an emotion, hasn't she? I think um, she realised earlier on, which skipped how it happened, that the key to unlocking her labyrinth is her feeling safe, yes. and she feels safe with him. And then there's another like inner labyrinth which is again about her feelings and it's still linked to him and that's why no one can get her to unlock it she couldn't even unlock it herself because she had to be put in a situation where she felt a certain way and now that's happened with him she's feeling that those things yeah it was kind of like her first of that she would she'd never have it if she never found him again I guess that was yeah the thing and yeah it's unlocking lots of memories she's getting lots coming back to her now isn't she about how yeah. they met and yeah so I've kind of it goes front and back a little bit so I think the first one I got is that he's quite there's a there's a bit of an age gap with them mm. so I think that's kind of mentioned a bit later so yeah. um it goes to when she's 15 and her silence is knackered and that's he yeah. starts shielding her then yeah yeah so he's 22 at that stage Mm. So, yeah, in theory, you can, there was definitely nothing physical going on from his point of view because he was yeah, fully aware of that. It's actually quite carefully done because when you realise that there's that age gap, it, it is addressed. It's addressed that it mm. wasn't a grooming situation. Um, no. Yeah, and you see, you see them together and you understand it. It's like, it's just, it's more of a friends to lovers thing that's gone yeah. on. I think it, when you go back to the first meeting, you kind of see mm, it then that because yeah. he is so childlike, even though he is that like seven years older. He's not had any contact. No, no childhood from she's, three. She's the first person who's yeah, been kind to him and got yeah. a, just even attempted to show him any care or empathy or anything. And they build this. It, and he's still quiet and distant, but she doesn't care. She's just, she's available to him and she likes him, yeah. you know. And yeah, there's mentions, isn't there, about her having the feelings. Because you can, I mean, you can imagine if you were 15 and there oh, this, was like, this older boy coming along. This older and... boy who's been your friend. Yeah. For, you, you're going to get the feelings. Yeah, you? Of course you and are. she's like, the I want to kiss. And he's like, no no yeah he's like yes but we're going to get married one day and he's like yeah okay yeah we'll do that yeah when when you're <laughs> old enough we'll we'll have yeah. the contract yeah. and we'll have the baby and yeah it sure. together. but not Aww. now no we're not doing that now no because it's not right it's like no. fair enough so good good guy moment there <laughs> yeah but there are just yeah loads of them that she's there one time and 
he turns up and she's like, that man's not here, is is he? Yeah. So she knew from very early that oh, Santana yeah. wasn't a good no, guy. No, no, no. No. So that's it. And then the book that he gave her, there's a yeah. snippet of that one where she's looking mm-hmm. through the maths book and he's trying to coach her and teach her how to do the yes. maths. She don't want to, fair enough. But he's brought it because she will learn better that way and will help her and, you know, mm-hmm. just like tutoring her. <laughs> stuff and he and he does like lovely things he, he lets her fly doesn't he? he uses his um he yeah. puts her up on his with his tk and lifts yeah. her oh. where are we now see we where get lost we? in these lovely moments i know that's it just like you get all the feelings and you're like oh so sweet so they do all of that and then she goes back to the eerie and she kind of wants to get back into a bit of a normal life so she goes out with yeah faith and mercy one of the other shifters mm. one of the sentinels yeah and then sort of they go out to have lunch and sort of three things happen at once so there's uh, there are shots fired at faith mercy mm. jumps on to try and protect mm. faith because as part of yeah. the pack is shouting at sahara to get the hell down and then somebody catches sahara yeah. and yanks her away so then she ends up with this dude and she's like, yeah. the bounty's gone, mate. So she, they're kind yeah. of there. And I think she gets this dialogue and it's like, the bounty's gone. Mm. There, there's no, you're not going to get anything from this. And he's like, oh, and I've got a private client. Yeah. Yeah. There's, who, there's um, someone else. And then she yeah. reveals her power for the yes. first time. This, this skill she's got that everyone's after and it's got stronger. Yeah. Because she goes over, doesn't she? To like, she, yeah, oh, she's kind of like, can I have some water? And he just hands it to her, thinking that it's going to be safe because she can't touch him, but it's enough just to brush his hand, even with a yeah, glove even with off. gloves and stuff. And it? that's it. She can go in his head, and she can rifle through his memories, and she can plant false ones and make him yeah. do whatever she likes. The puppet master. Yeah, she is kind of that that is it the the one yeah. she's the chosen who can do anything to anyone so with that yeah. power and that's why I they do. wanted her to to yeah. have like this ability to just i mean god yeah if you can do that to people then you're you're just it's the world's your oyster. oyster yeah exactly <laughs> I did like the fact though she goes over she's like can I have some water he hands her the glass and then he hands her his gun <laughs> and he's kind of like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant what did I read what? that word? why did he do that yeah I remember the first time I read that I was like yeah. ah what <laughs> and then it's clear well yeah that's yeah. what she can do and that's what yeah. is Caleb's always known she could do this and I think it's such an amazing thing in the trust between them they both know how dangerous each other are. I mean, they're, they're quite the power couple, aren't they, really? Well, you yeah. Know, she can control everybody's mind and he controls everything physically. Everything else. <laughs> yeah. So it's like between them, but they they completely trust each other. Like, he doesn't fear her going into his mind. He All he's ever said to her is just like, if you were to do it, just just do it all, just you know kill yeah, me just kind stop, of thing yeah. yeah I don't I don't you know yeah. you don't want to go in there but if you did then that's it and but she's like I would never do that it you know she's very very strong in her conscience and convictions about going through people's minds and and yeah, teaching them to do things you know because she's, yeah, got, she's all got this epic thing. conscience yeah yeah which makes sense because it's like her power wasn't that matured as we've said before and as she knew when they took her she couldn't do it with so little contact she but had yeah, now to, it's close yeah and she she lets caleb know then doesn't she and again it's it's the whole negotiation let me kill him no yeah <laughs> so yeah so she gets his computer don't she's like cool yeah. you can come but yeah there are certain things that yeah. we need to meet you've got to agree to yeah <laughs> No murdering, please. No torture. Yeah. No. Tatiana hired him. It, it was, was a someone, second in command. Yeah. yeah so she's got it through her. To find out. Yeah. That's when Caleb does a little bending of the rules with the whole torture business. Then <laughs> he? he goes to question her. He's like, Did you have anybody that you told? And she's like, No. There's, there's someone else. Did you have someone that could figure it out? And she was like, There was this one guy. And that was enough. Yeah. But he's he's persuasive in the way that Caleb is persuasive. Little pinkies broken and things like that. 
but he doesn't class that as torture apparently i mean that was literally what they did in medieval times wasn't it when you wanted information you torture people by breaking your fingers and but to him i guess it's just like it's another level you're torturing people when you haven't got a reason to do it (laughs) it's like you know bad guy so yeah um we've got a mention of the ghost as well so i think they come back to each other and the ghost yeah. is mentioned mm-hmm. we find out who he is yeah. and what he does and he's kind of he drops information about soy stuff and yeah puts little leaks out about stuff yeah and yeah then she's like for the love of god don't hurt him you two yeah. would be Ooh. perfect together don't hurt him. You'll be a good team. And he's like, well, yeah. I think the ghost is probably going to start fading out soon anyway. Yeah. So it's And fine. he's like, how, she's like, how can you control that? You know, it's not, it's not up to you. You can't, can't kill him yeah. off. And he's like, it's you, that you isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And she's you like, see, oh, my God. Point. Yeah, Caleb made a joke. He was like playing a little game with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Is that where he kind of manages just about a smile? <laughs> no, I don't think that is the point. No, I think that's much later as well. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't oh, smile for a long It's like 90% probably. Yeah. Before he smiles. Yeah. Him. It's like 90s internet, it's still loading. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think after this we do go and see his his pals. Yeah, we meet those. Have we mentioned those before or not? Yes. So there's a priest and it sounds like a joke. A side <laughs> <It priest does. laughs> <gonna Yeah. laughs> walk into a church. Yeah. So we've got a former arrow, Judd Lauren, and mm. Father Xavier Perez. He has right. a fantastic name. Yes. So yeah, and they are yeah, they're kind of quite a relevant thing for Caleb. They're the people he mm. out of everybody in the world, he only really ever had Sahara. But yeah. he actually trusts these two because yeah. of what mm. they've done for him and it's all good. Mm. And yeah, I think it was to do with because it was a lot of kids and it was the yeah. innocence that he was saving. Something he understood because of his loyalty to Sahara, isn't it? It was Yeah, and uh, just... both him and Sahara had awful yeah. well, his childhood was vile, but then from mm. her at sixteen it shouldn't have yeah. happened to them, either exactly. of them. No. Um, and they they want to talk to him. I think is it Judd that wants to talk to him about getting Ming, and um, he and, and Caleb's fine with that. He's got no yeah. feelings about Ming in particular. Um, he's just that just that you can't kill him yet because uh, he's he's an anchor, isn't he? So and it will destabilize the net. So he's just like, yes. just wait till the right moment and yeah. you can do what you want. I'll give you the information you need. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. I will tell you, he is in France and this is this and this, but yeah, yeah. just give it a little bit. And he's like, yeah, and the changelings yeah. want him. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's all good. And then Judd goes and he talks to Xavier, doesn't he, about uh, Sahara and how he feels about her. Because um, Xavier's got a, a woman he needs to find that he loves. Mm-hmm. And... And Caleb is worried. He, he says he doesn't know how to love her. He doesn't know how to love Sahara. He doesn't think he's capable of it. Oh, no. Caleb. We'll get there. Yeah. And it, but yeah, and yeah. I guess, and I think the thing with this is he's now, because they've become so much closer and she's starting to remember, he feels the clock is really ticking on their relationship. And him losing her when she finally remembers the big yeah, thing. Happened. So yeah, I think after the meeting, he goes to her just to see her. And I think mm. when he turns up, she wakes up and she kind of does that thing where she scoots over in the bed, lifts the yeah. thing, just pats it for him to yeah. get in. He was only checking in, but she yeah. just knew he was there because you know, sense like you say, just sense these things. He's like, yeah. Have a scooch. And he and he has this moment and he doesn't know what it is and he thinks, is is this tenderness? What is this yeah. feeling that I'm having? But in... then I think that opens the memory he yeah. has and we see it on the page. We see yeah. what happened when they met. And I seem to remember the first time I read it, but I didn't notice, I don't know if I didn't notice it so much the second time because it was a rereading. But I felt that there was something different in it, not just from their perspectives, but that he remembered a couple of different details to it which I felt was a little clue to something later yeah we'll talk that's about when it comes up we reread 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 yes mm. 
so yeah so when we see her point of view of it she's kind of pulled in to so um santano is with anthony to get information he yeah. takes caleb along and then and anthony's like well i don't he calls um sahara in and he's like mm. okay you take him away and we will discuss it and sometimes yeah. like no he goes nowhere mm. so yeah there's a bit of back and forth Anthony won't deal with him because there's children present so you can see yeah. the divide in the the adults in the room already yeah but yeah begrudgingly it's like you you can do it now or you can come back in a few months your loss not mm. mine yeah so Santano kind of gives mm. in so from Sahara's point of view she kind of goes with him and she can see that something's not right with him he's walking and he's off Mm. and we find out earlier we didn't mention it that her dad is a MSI he's medical yeah yeah and she's like oh he's got machines in his office we could look at and he's like why do I want to look at machines and she's like oh no reason but okay it's fine but when we see it from his point of view he's Mm -hmm. kind of you're sat in his head and pretty much Santano burnt him before they even got to the meet him to yeah keep him in just check. to remind him who is in control yeah. so he's in pain and so and he and he yeah. realizes that Sahara yeah. has picked up on that even though she's so young she's so perceptive yeah. Um, yeah, no adults ever have before and within no. five minutes she has yeah and he can't say yes it's part of the control, isn't it? Like if he was to yeah. say yes to going and being checked out medically, that would trigger these like Something. booby traps in his head that it would yeah. give away what's been happening to him. Yeah, and she just does these lovely little things, like she takes a different path so it is less strenuous for him because she knows and yeah, they go and sit the by the pond, don't they? Yeah. And yeah. Mm really sweet but yeah to see both sides of it it's just yeah to understand and he's just like yeah and I think that's part of like when we were talking about the whole um the age gap thing and the grooming aspect it's like I think it's very clear when you see all the flashbacks and stuff that she was the one that was less vulnerable he was vulnerable. yeah she is he had no experience of people he had no one that cared for him if anybody was going to be taken advantage of out of the yeah, two of them him. even though she was six years younger she yeah. had the emotional intelligence <laughs> to know how well, to this manipulate is him so yeah it yeah it's obvious from yeah. first meeting why why they're on a level and why they meet and it's just like of yeah they're, they're just it's they're just perfect yeah, they're jigsaw yes. pieces that are just slotted in place that needed each other yeah and then... i think there's one bit that he kind of he blurts out at the end and he's mm. like you're not silent you're not yeah you're for somebody your age you need to be silent yeah like, protecting her he warns and she her. kind of mm. yeah so from her point of view she's a bit like oh god okay you're not going to tell her yeah mm. but from his point of view he's trying to warn her so it's kind of yeah and he doesn't, and that's how she knows she can trust him. He he that very first he never meeting, does. she yeah. never betrayed his secrets, she know, and he never betrayed hers. So yeah. they were always in this relationship where they could trust each other. Yeah. And then it goes to Hong Kong. Yes, where up, there is and it's whoa. Um massive, massive, massive attack that Pure Sai have done. They've used yeah. these insane uber fire bombs that have just set off yeah i mean yeah so an inferno military military grade weapons and they know that nobody will be able to do anything against it no no ordinary methods will work no it's kind of normal tks can work against it it has to be him it's like a challenge to him isn't it yeah pretty much yeah it's because if, if you try and do something it will just refeed itself you have mm. to get in and destroy yeah. it from the middle outwards yeah it is quite the awesome show of power it's, indeed it is it's insane he has to go into this inferno the the core of it doesn't he um and they and with the other TKs, they create a ring on the outside so that they can trap the fire. He's going to push it out from the core yes. and they're going to create a fire break line so that it can't go any further. I mean, it's too late for like thousands of people. They're already dead. 
but they have to yeah. stop it. Yeah, and he, and he just is he's, he's like choppered in, dropped in yeah, the middle just dropped before, in. before the helicopter explodes because it's too hot as yeah. well. He's got on the fireproof gear when he goes in there. And yeah, it's just like, wow. <laughs> That's a real, real big show of power, that one. But yeah, he's everybody in there for sees like, it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it sort of is he in there for half an hour? Or something. It's something I got it's like 27 minutes, and I don't it know if it takes, takes him that long yeah. to sit there and pull it all in. Yeah. And she's kind of sat watching him and waiting. Yeah, she's gone out and she catches on. it on a telly outside, doesn't yeah, she? She's Francisco, just watching yeah. it. Yeah, just watching it on the news. Yeah, and she knows she can't contact him because God, she can't distract him. Normally she would yeah, contact just him tap in the, and see. Yeah, see if he's all right. But she can't do that. She just has to wait and see if he's okay. Because, yeah, he's in the middle of a massive raging fire. But he does it. So <laughs> they managed yeah, to do does. it. And then kind of when it's done, she's like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah. he doesn't know how to cope. It's like seven years of nobody caring. In yeah. theory, 20 odd years of nobody caring. And he's like, yeah. I'm uninjured, if that's what you mean. Yeah. It's like, oh. Well, yeah, I'm all right. And they, yeah, they're, they're kind of figuring it out. There's a lot of political stuff going on, isn't there? They're kind of figuring out why they're doing that. Why did they go for such a massive show of power and yeah. pulling him into it? And, and I then, think it's kind of a bit of a lovey-dovey moment with all of that, that he realises that, yeah, that he goes back. Yeah, that he goes back and she's sort of, even with anything that's happening, she'll still claim him. It's nice. But yeah, then we go to Pure Psy and they're, yeah. yeah, they're so pissed that it was just kind of quite easy. And then yeah. this is where they've got um, initiation of Phoenix code, which we don't yeah. know what that is, mm. but that is kind of their piece de resistance. That's what they're, they're throwing in there. Yeah. So that's um, when we go to a, an attack in Geneva. Yeah. And this is a, a real turning point for it all, isn't it? Because they've attacked this conference, which is for basically for like gifted children from yep. all over the world. And they've chosen this. Pure Sai have chosen this to rile up the other races, it almost seems, because it's yeah. starting to all of these attacks happening are obviously killing people from all of the different races even though it's a, a civil war that's happening within the Psy race. So, you know, the changelings and the humans are starting to feel anti psi because, you know, they're, yeah. they're causing a problem to them. And that gets kind of, that's been stoked by this thing that's yeah. happened there too. Well, well um, this is, it's not just all races, it's children, isn't it? It's yeah, 12 to 18. It. It's kind and, of, um, you know, it's the double whammy of everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Caleb decides that it he has to make an announcement about it. It's like this this blanket announcement that it's it's gone too far. It's not acceptable. Everybody who's affiliated with them needs to say if they know any pure side to hunt them down. And yes, you know, yeah, they're gonna be exterminated. Basically, they don't yeah. hold with this. And he's like, he's he's sending out images to people of the of, you know of the massacred children oh, yeah. it's awful and Sahara goes to help she gets teleported in to help with the languages because there's people from all over so she's helping with the victims as mm -hmm. well and yes yeah, so um, she's in one bit doing that he's somewhere else doing that and they're kind of chatting to each other so they sort of have yeah. cat nap well he doesn't he never sleeps but she has a never cat sleeps. nap and then wakes up and chats it. to him and making yeah. sure he's like, are you eating? Are you are you okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just all these little things, just yeah. keep reaching out and making sure mm -hmm. he's all right. And yeah. then somebody comes and brings him like an energy drink to keep him going. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, luckily it's kind of a nice, gentle old lady. As they Who probably just always just are. hang around. You know? Yeah, I was going to say, have we learned nothing from Snow White with the apple? <laughs> No, he has. So yeah, he kind of he's yeah. She's not. She's a bit suspect over here. Yeah. So, so he, I can he take he your of... bottle when you're done. I'll just stand up. Yes. Like, there's nothing else to be getting on with that's important than making sure 
that recycling gets done. It is yeah. a bit odd when everything's yeah. rubble around. All these you. dead children yeah, and stuff. Exactly. You know. So quite rightly, he's like, hang on. And he just freezes her in his hold, doesn't he? And he gets um it's Vasic, isn't it? That he gets to come over yes. because he's got this amazing, like built in arm thing. It's kind of amazing. I think it's kind of slowly killing him. I mean, yeah, yeah, that too. (laughs) But it can do cool stuff. Yeah, Yeah. it's fantastic. Which can detect poison. So he puts a drop on it, just one drop, and he's like, "Yeah, that would have killed you." Yeah, that would incapacitated you completely. Mm -hmm. He goes to Sahara. Yeah, so they bring Sahara in just to have a mooch, and they figure out she's one of. Ming's people yeah there was but, and yeah, there was I think, more than one attack gonna happen wasn't there or is that yes yeah, so there was Luxembourg and I think yeah. Paris or somewhere and yeah. yeah these they've been stopped because of somebody an F psi yeah. having mm-hmm. foresight and just yeah. catching these things and putting a block on them before they happened and I think that when when he brings Sarah in to use her sight and stuff and he tells her what's happened because they've agreed to be like really honest she start again she starts to show her colors in that she she i mean she's pissed she's really really angry that someone's tried to kill him she is showing that possessiveness you know she's lady got mind. as much of the lady mine stuff going on too have we done that lady mine yet is that come later i think it comes quite near yeah, the end it comes quite soon doesn't it yeah. where she's actually like you are mine yeah oh, oh, oh. and so but yeah we yeah. find out aiden so after they figure mm-hmm. out all of that, Aiden pages in and said that the head of Pure Sai has been spotted and sighted by a few different people in San yeah. Francisco. So they figure out that that's what's going to happen next. They want to try and track him down. They're on the hunt. They're, you know, they're finding the, the arrows are on task. We're finding all of the members of Pure Sai and they're trying to hunt down the leader and yeah. They go there, don't they? And Sahara again offers to use her ability to help. Yes, so she'll go to a central point and yeah. sort of see if she can sort of push her barriers out a little bit and see if she yeah. can hear anything. See what she's Which again, of. yeah, her good guy moment. He kind of he makes sure all of her clothes are bulletproof. Yeah, it's so sweet. I haven't got to the t-shirts yet, but keep your sweatshirt on. No. Exactly. Yeah. Wink, yeah. wink. Yeah. Yeah. Those <laughs> yeah. are just those are just Egyptian she cotton. Just, just yeah, and she just smiles at him like, "I know what you've done." <laughs> you yeah. Know? You're not fooling me. <laughs> you think you're here. a bad guy? You're not. But don't break yeah. her fingers. <laughs> no. <laughs> or squish her brain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, this yeah. is where her her everything comes in. Her moral compass comes in because she's like, "Okay, I know." it's really morally wrong and I don't want to go and rifle through all of these people's thoughts yeah but you know in the long greater good sort of thing going on there it's like and the thing is if she touches their minds it's like she can control it later but she's got no intention of doing that so yeah yeah she needs to do this to stop all of the massacres and there's a meeting, isn't there? He goes off to do a meeting in the same place with like all the heads of stuff so, doing the meeting and she's doing the scanning at the same time and she picks up on something and yeah. sends him a mental message straight away and he's like, right, I know what's happening. We've got to go here to the station. Yes, it is at the station. It's at the Sky yeah. train station. So he kind of, they go, I think, does he pull the arrows in and they all go around the building to see if they can figure out what's what. Yeah, I think they bring the changeling in to try and sniff yeah, out. Yeah, so they sniff stuff out. Yeah, because it's going to be... Was this the bit where the old woman goes into the toilet? Oh, I love that. They're bit. trying. Love yeah, that. so they go to they go and check everything. <laughs> so they try and go into the toilets to make sure nothing's hidden. Yeah, and then so there's her and this dude and this old woman's like, find somewhere else to do your business. I know you young and, people like going into the, you know, different places, and and Sahara racks all like all innocent. What? Like, what yeah. is she talking about? Where yeah, do people what are they have skin do, privileges that aren't in the bedroom? <laughs> it's just amazing. Vaughn's like, speak to Faith, speak to Faith. I just don't. Yeah. Like, don't you're don't like my little me. sister. Yeah. yeah. Just, you're, you're family now. Just talk you're to trying Faith. to I'm trying not. to irritate me, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Definitely. God bless them. 
but, but yeah. then um, they figure out you pass out over that like... to yeah. a bomb yeah <laughs> well, it's like a poisonous yeah epic and poisonous caleb's found it, it. he's right yes. there with something so he, if it goes off he's gonna get it straight in the face so mm-hmm. Sahara was quite scared for him but luckily they get someone in and they defuse it and just a few other ones go off and then yes as like decoys to create panic so that everybody would stay in the station but they're kind of they're just so tiny people yeah <laughs> as they, people do they kind of go what's that oh it's fine. Yeah. we need a train it is <laughs> it is scary actually that how much people do that there's like a like, really? I'm busy, you know i've got to keep going um yeah and because they, they just say loudly doesn't it oh firecrackers just to make keep yeah. people calm and it's bloody fine. kids and so now the arrows are on the trail of the leader and, and Caleb yeah, goes so off everybody's with pulled in yeah, yeah so the changelings come in to try and pull the scent in yeah and sahara stays at the station doesn't she just for a while um until it's cleared out and it's calm and then she's going to go back and be safe yes. while caleb goes off but she's in contact with him with the whole psychic link thing. And then they um, find him. They find yeah, the PSI dude. That's it. They get and to again, like a parking lot, don't they? Yeah. Yes. And then the shots fired. And you see mm-hmm. again his epic power that he just basically pushes all the cars yeah. like like it's like yeah. a t- little tyke thing and it's like a kid's toys. He just pushes yeah. all the cars into him. And then the gun he gets shots a lock on him stop. because yeah, he, he lets him shoot a few times. So yeah, he, knows. he kind of yeah. Where yeah. he is. Bulletproof trousers. There's a bruise going to be there and there's an yeah. owl. That's fine, but mm-hmm. I'll deal with it later. He, Because, yeah, he doesn't feel any pain. So they could shoot him how many times? He just blocks the pain he's off just, as soon yeah, as it happens. He's, yeah, he, he turns down his pain receptors and he just carries on. The first yeah. one she knows about because she's he she somehow recognises his pain. I don't know how. He doesn't know how she does that. But he just tells her it, it's fine. It's, you know, it's it's not a problem. The bulletproof stuff is <laughs> bulletproof yeah. gear had done its job. But the one in his leg didn't. <laughs> and he's, yeah. he's too busy huh. to talk to her about that one. And she doesn't yeah. know. Later. She, yeah. yeah. But he goes but, yeah. and gets her again, doesn't he? He does, yeah, to find out who this guy is. Because he mm. goes up to him and he's like, you're not going to ask me questions. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. No, yeah. No, no. Don't need to. I- because but yeah, yeah he, he knows of, that trying to go into his brain would be trapped. Yeah, that's what some of the other ones have done. You know, they've been tracking down these other people and they've committed suicide so that they don't get information from them. And yeah, it's but he knows that it's a risk. But Sahara with her power, she can it's just quite stay easily. In. Yeah. Just just hovers her hand in front of his face and she can figure it all out. So yeah, she figures out that it's not this isn't the final big thing that no. phoenix is still a thing that yeah, yeah he's basically all of his little groups he's kind mm. of split them and sent them adrift yeah. to kind of get the pure soy message out there mm-hmm. and yet yeah. they they want to scatter and collapse the sign net yeah and yeah well yeah it. and it, he's creating like his own little hydra yeah yeah, it's going off and doing it in yeah, lots lots of small operations that are independent from each other. So yeah, they're all working towards the same goal, but but yeah, did the, the, linked. the moment here where he kind of when Caleb crouches down and sits with him was just mm. kind of quiet. So he's like he takes his hand, so he doesn't even who he is, he doesn't have to die by himself. And when yeah. this dude's reeling all this stuff off about this is this this is that, and in his head he's like, well, we've already taken out. 75 ish percent of all of your operatives it's not happening I'm yeah not so it's not going to happen but yeah that's it i i will let you, die, let you die in the piece in. that you need yeah yeah Aww. which is so, really again it clearly he does have empathy maybe not for the right people i'm not yeah, sure that's it's not people you right want to start having the empathy for but you know but he recognizes the logic of what was said he talks about the logic because it was like what he had the argument with sahara about in that if they took down the net there would be collateral damage for the weaker people and that's yeah. kind of what the pure size guy was saying was that you know the strong will survive and he's like well yeah i can kind of see that but that was before she she was here and she was everything so yeah yeah he was the world 
so yeah and then that's yeah the leg shot and stuff come in yeah and then they go back to his place and he realizes that she's just been terrified he thinks of it as their place now don't they their, yes their bedroom his home and her home yeah and he realizes that she's just been really really scared that's why she got so angry you know yes. as you do yeah and he tries to comfort her doesn't he and he says um you know i'm sorry that i didn't tell you about the leg it was after you know <laughs> I, didn't, yeah. I didn't mean to frighten you yeah and i think it becomes clear at this point that she's remembered she's she she knows she's already yeah it already came back at another point yeah and... yeah because she's saying to him you know how much she cares for him and he's like you you can't you know you don't know how awful it is and like no I remember I know what happened I was one of his victims yeah yeah it, I was one as well wasn't I yeah and he, he just can't deal with the fact that she knows and she's still there she yeah. can't possibly understand in his head and he goes outside and she she follows and they talk through what he thinks happened and what she yeah. has now remembered, which are different. It's yeah. It's yes, very harsh. He thinks that he was he he nearly killed her. He Caleb yeah. thinks it was him. He he couldn't control himself. He couldn't control mm-hmm. the anger, the rage. He couldn't control what Santana was doing to her and stop it. Yeah. And then when he did fling his power out, he nearly killed Sahara in the process. And she's like, no. Yeah, it's like he feels he betrayed her ultimately because the only reason he knew that she was there was because he'd had that relationship with her. He'd thought it'd been secret the whole time. But, but Enrique yeah, no, was he'd like, known. no, he'd always known. And, it yeah, was and he kept, it kept her there because she was stable. Yeah, it was and like, she was just yeah. useful. She was a tool. I, yeah, she was useful. Yeah, horrible. Well, this and is then, it. Yeah. Why are you still here? You're mine. That's yeah. your lady mine. And yeah, she pulls his sleeve up then and pulls the scar out. Yeah, and, and remembers like, yeah, that was what happened. How the scar got there, and it was like, yeah, that's from the hotel room where he had you, and he was cutting you and hurting you, and making me watch and then he made me do it and I hurt you and he's been remembering from the beginning her saying no stop no Caleb and she's like no 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 that's not what happened I wasn't screaming for you to stop hurting me I was screaming for you to stop hurting yourself because he was struggling so hard against the compulsion that Enrique was was he was giving himself brain damage wasn't he yeah he, he was gonna yeah com- just completely kill himself from struggling against so much the control that was put on him to stop him and the you know he remembers having the knife put in his hand and he remembers her blood and he remembers her screaming and he remembers her then being gone and he thinks all of those things are connected and that was him and she's like no he actually let go of the knife he managed to overpower that compulsion to let go of the knife and that made Enrico really enraged so he burnt his arm yeah he pushed like, him against like the old metal radiator yeah, which is the scar that he's still got and then he continued to torture Sahara and that's when Caleb slipped his leash and used his power against him for the yeah. first time in it and it scared him and he then took her away. He, I mean, he just like beat the ever-loving oh. crap out of Caleb first. Yeah, he bashed oh, him into was, the yeah, ceiling and say, the floor, and you know, so it was, he was like awful. awful. And that. It, I mean, it, that's a real and he begs moments too, isn't it? Yeah, He's begging for her, he'll say, yeah. I'll yeah. do anything, he, he won't just leave her alone. Yeah, Caleb uh, won't beg for anything apart from her, and it just yeah. and then he just oh, it's and she's like that. reaching for him, and just their fingertips touch. And then yeah. she's she's taken and that's that's it. And he's like, his mind is blown. Like he that is not how he remembered it. At but all. yeah, she kind of puts the pictures in of her memory, yeah. doesn't she? So he yeah. can she see it to and believe him. it. Yeah, and that's the thing that's always like making him feel like he's gonna give over to that darkness within him. And that's the mind moment, isn't it? As well. She's like, your mind, not his. Don't do yeah. what he would have wanted you to do in being his creature. And I 
I think that's why, Anna, because I know you like your mind moments, don't you? Mine. And I like, I, I like this because it's like they both have mind moments, but it's but it's like he has to figure out who he belongs to. It's him choosing, isn't it, whether he belongs to Enrique, who he has become his creature, or he belongs to her. And she's like, it's so strong what she's saying to him, and that your actions are me. You know, you go yeah. and choose to do bad things. You know, I'm I'm going to be fighting to pull you back all of the time. And yeah, it, it's you go and do but that this stuff when I'm I'm with you. I'm never going to leave you. Mm. Yeah. So she realizes that. Yeah. So Sa- Santano took Sahara and Caleb didn't ever know whether she was alive yeah. or dead. She was the bartender yeah. and she realizes yeah, yeah. that from that moment to whenever Santana was dead, Caleb yeah. allowed Santana to do every single thing, allowed him to yeah. see these murders and do these murders to protect her just in yeah. case. He didn't know yeah. whether she was dead or not, but he mm-hmm. did it anyway. It so was she the ultimate of, yeah. to, to control him now that he knew he couldn't control him yeah. physically anymore because his power had got too much, but he controlled him through that, didn't he? So, yeah, and then it goes all nice. There's obviously manic sex because, again, that's an epic moment. There's got to be. Epic moment, epic bonding. That Mm -hmm. has to happen. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, and then it's in the rain, isn't it? So and so he yeah. puts like air cushions under their legs. So they're out yeah. on the, so when he, because he's gone out on the balcony. Yeah. So he puts air cushions under their legs mm-hmm. and then he puts like a big bubble around them and makes it warm. This is why we need a Caleb. Yeah. Very comfortable. So, so yeah, they, they do, do the, that and they, they bond on another level. They bond on the psychic plane too. And, yes. Uh, there's a moment of something. Yeah. Yeah, something happens and they become intertwined. Um, yes, they're, they're his black, yeah. his obsidian. Yeah. And, she's gold. and her gold. I yeah. love and, gold. And it's all intertwined, but they've, yeah. they've protected it because it's not something that should obviously happen. It's a sign of yes. silence being completely broken to yeah. have um, a bond like this in, in the network. And they just have to decide what to do with it. Yeah, he decides. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, they're going to see the arrows because he's like, yeah, okay, silence has to fall. I need to see who mm-hmm. is with me, who is against me, because the arrows, if they're, they are the hardest, most dangerous lot. If silence yeah. falls, they need to be with him because if they're not, yeah. then they're, they're they're against him and he will not risk Sahara. So he goes to see. Yeah. So I don't know if we've mentioned him yet. The head of the arrows is a dude called Aiden. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, his kind of second in command is Vasic. And yeah, Vasic is kind of, it's mentioned a few times. That, again, this probably has no relevance to this, but he's quite dark and he's not very chatty. He is, yeah, yeah he's in a not great place. Yeah, he's he's ported um, Sahara around a couple of times and she's yeah. found him as cold as Caleb, which is pretty yeah. cold. Yes. Um, I think, yeah, I think it is very, because like we were saying before, there's the... The arrows have been conditioned since they were so young because they're so powerful to be these completely silent operatives. They need to be shown, like, and obviously that's not good for the health. We are seeing that. They're starting to realise that. And Caleb takes this risk to let them in and let them see this bond bond. that's happened. And and it's Vasic that's like he sees it. There's this hope for them that it's not yeah, if it's they not, lose well, their it's, silence it's not going to be awful there's actually hope for something better something good that can come yeah. of it yeah and so Caleb's got gone to tell them look I'm gonna take control of the next because yes. I have to and I need to bring down silence that's what's got to happen in order to yeah. fix it are you gonna stand with me or not that's yeah will they fall in well yeah I think he comes in doesn't he and he kind of lays his hands on the table and it's like nobody's ever done that before and treated them yeah as they deserve yeah. to be treated yeah. they're not exactly puppets he, and... he respects them he respects what they do and he wants them yeah. on the side and he, but this yeah. is it Aiden's like we can't silence we can't all fall and he's like well no. but we can adapt so like, yes yeah well done that's it and shows them the adapt yes 
Um, and he goes off and does another couple of jobs, have his scar removed and things. Yes. And the, <laughs> the bit at the end that I wrote down, we've not actually mentioned once through the entire What's thing. That? So he comes back and he's kind of had his scar fixed. Yeah. And then she dances for him. Yeah. Oh, no, no we've not mentioned no, about not. her being a dancer at all. Again, so it's the lovely of, moment it's... for us to wrap it all up just doesn't Hope really it, it's like telling a joke and you've missed out a really important yeah, bit and, it, and you get line. to the punchline and you're like well that don't make sense but no he gets back and yeah he's they have a perfect. lovely moment and they have lovely reminiscing moment. about childhood she, things yeah she remembers her dance steps because that was one of her things with her broken silence she danced because she liked it and she was only yes. meant to do it for exercise reasons <sighs> Yeah. Awesome. But yeah, he does. He dances with that and they float yeah. on air. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Silence is gone. Mm-hmm. Let's see what happens. And yeah. then a new dawn. Yeah. So yeah, that is the end, which yeah. was, it was very good. It's, it's a brilliant book. It's really good. It is. It, I was very, very happy when you recommended that one to me. Yay. Yes, yes. Definitely. I'm just curious how many post it she's got on her wall to kind of keep track of where everything is My going god yeah i just that keeping hold of that kind of universe and that many characters and that many things that have happened that's there that is some next level stuff going on there but yeah so that is week five over and done with yeah. and now we're on last week next week <gasps> week six the last week yeah. Yes, so we it's have a book series. that, see, I think this book, um, I'm not trying to big it up as the best of the best because it, well, it's personal opinions, no yeah. judgment to anyone, mm-hmm. but it's kind of the one that you recommended to me yeah. and I kind of just happened to have a break, picked it up and within like yeah. a day I'm like, oh my God, I love this one so much. Yeah, so I read it in a day as well. It was like just yeah. insane. It just yeah, ate um, up this book. Yeah both of us so we've had Mm -hmm. so I recommend stuff to you and back and forth but this is the one that kind of brought us together I think this was the one that kind of spurred the whole yeah thinking of doing gone really because it was like yeah we just love this so much we need to talk about why we love it so much yeah why this book is so good yeah I could walk away now and just leave it there and go all right join us next week yeah yeah so (laughs) week six uh, the book that we're doing is called wolf gone wild which yeah. is by Juliet Cross. Yeah. So the link from now to that is, mm-hmm. is something that is close to my heart. It should be close <laughs> to everybody's heart. It is mine. It is the alpha-ness alpha. of it. Yeah, because, I mean, I would say that part of Obsidian is, I mean, yeah, you can't get much more alpha than Caleb in the way that he is in control yeah. of everything the, and everyone on the planet with all that yeah. power but the it hand is around the neck that's kind of like the serious dark side and then we're going to go to another amazing alpha the best alpha ever alpha just, is, is wow. alpha yeah, yeah it's just brilliant yeah it's going to be fun so yeah. yeah join us next week week six yeah. wolf gone wild um yeah we're glad Can't that wait. you came um follow us at sff rumcast on any available platform twitter yeah. instagram youtube we're on all of these places come and say hi come and add recommendations do all of the good stuff yeah 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 bye bye <laughs>